عليك لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are <coughs> Hello guys, welcome to my live broadcasting. I hope everybody is doing okay. I hope my sound is loud and clear. Guys, we are live on air. I missed all of you. I hope my sound is coming loud and clear. Give me a one if you can hear me. Thank you for the confirmation. Welcome our admins, Longius of Jerusalem, Phil Herrera. Keep our admins in your prayers, guys. They are always doing an amazing job. Miss Piggy, welcome. Max Copper, Lee Lynch, Peter DeWall, Phyllis, Jan, Baka, Max, Abdul Halik, another admin. Keep him also in your prayers, guys. Keep us in your prayers. TM Crosspulse, Fairfair Aqua, John, Sloppy Joe, Potter. There, there are a lot of you guys. Sorry if I cannot mention everybody's name. Bear with me. God bless you. God bless your families. Thank you for joining in. Hope everybody is having a nice day. Because I am having a nice day. It means you are, have to have a nice day. <laughs> Welcome guys, <clears throat> thank you for joining in. Our topic today is to see if Muhammad is actually, if he had lied over and over and we're going to go through some sources to see if he actually lied and we can close the case for Muhammad and Islam. Before we start guys, I want you to or I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so we can be guided through today's live show. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience and please bless this live stream so it can be good. Lord, thank you for your grace and thank you for my lovely audience and subscribers who always are supporting me day in, day out for the last year. Please bless them. Bless their loved ones and families. Please God keep all of us healthy and safe in this year, in this new year. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything we do and everything we do and say, acknowledge you Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts and actions. Please give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, taqiyya, makr, lies, deception, or any doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need of you, who are in need of the truth or are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open their eyes so also they can be saved as we are saved through the blood of our Holy Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today during this live show so I can speak the truth without any error or any shame. Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. On this live broadcast today, we'll have the opportunity to investigate if Muhammad actually was a liar or not, as the Muslims claim. By only using authentic sources as our evidence. So on this live show, we will use biblical verses and also Quranic ayahs and authentic hadith to prove our case. Anything Muhammad said today will be used against him in the court of law. So I hope that Muhammad will have Allah as his attorney present during today's questioning. 
to defend him in the court of law. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we'll have a nice Q&A session with our guests, as always, in the live chat. And hopefully we'll have also Muslims who might call us live on Skype. So if you think you have the courage and the knowledge to call us, I will open up my Skype now. Only the Muslims can call for now, guys. Only the Muslims can call us for now. But when we are done teaching, we will allow also Christians to call in. So this is our, basically the basic rules of our live streams. You should know them by now. So welcome everybody. God bless you. Nice to have you here. Thank you for your support. Muhammad. Muhammad, Muhammad or Muhammad. You have maybe seen my video, my latest video, guys. I think it was one of my best videos. And <clears throat> to be honest with you, I put more than four hours in that last video. It was a 10 minutes video. But you guys have no idea. The people who don't do uh, video editing, you will have no idea how much work it is to, you know, to Photoshop the the the. the photos or the pictures that you want to use uh you know all the research uh the the video rendering uh the editing and you know i'm a perfectionist i don't want to produce anything that is not going to be good you know so i put up many hours for you uh and to be honest with you i rather always do live shows because you know i click uh go live and i'm live right so that's mo much more easy for me but since we have received uh, an overwhelming, overwhelming amount of requests to also produce short but detailed videos. We have to do this, guys. I'm really busy, you know. Uh, people who maybe have heard, I'm going to be a father in a couple of months, a uh, father of a baby boy. So you maybe have an idea how busy I am. I actually don't sleep much. <laughs> But it is what it is, you know, God gave us this gift and we have to use it, you know. Guys, I'm, re I'm re replaceable, right? I'm replaceable. You don't need me. We, including myself, we all need Jesus, right? But if God gave me this gift, then I will use it against Muhammad and his man-made cult in the court of law today. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for your uh, congratulations. Thank you. May Jesus bless you. Are there any Muslims, guys? Do we have any Muslims? Because we have at least two dislikes, so that means we have at least two Muslims. If there's a Muslim who wants to call us live, we are live. We are live on air, brother. You can call us and maybe you can prove to us why Muhammad, according to you, is a prophet of God. And why Islam is the truth? I hope there are not going to be only um, Muslim kihad, keyboard jihadis, right? I hope you are going to call yourself a man. Pick up the phone and call me on Skype. My Skype ID is DROP Christian. My Skype is open, guys. Look. Do you see it? My Skype is open. So if you think you have the courage and the knowledge, and call me. Guys, wait a second. I received a message from our dear sister Hatun from Speaker's Corner. Let me read it and we will continue from there. Uh, she sent me a message. Thanks. I, I sent her a message before. She is asking me, how are you, brother? I, I'm okay, sister. I hope you are uh, watching too. How is life and ministry going? Life is very busy. I'm good. My family is healthy and good. And, you know, the ministry, thanks to the Lord, uh, you know, is good. Since we can continue doing this and Muslims cannot refute us, that means we are doing something good, right? They are sending us many uh, death threats, uh, many insults. That means we are doing a good job, right? And as long as you can't refute me, I will continue doing what I do. And we are doing this for now at least 15 years. So, you know. God is good, we have the truth, and we should not be ashamed to share the truth. And we should not be ashamed to expose 
liars and deceivers. Some people have asked me, guys, some people have asked me, Rob Christian, why are you so rude? Why are you, you know, you know, uh, you know, these Christians, I mean, Christians, really? Haven't you read, uh, haven't you read a uh, chapter of, uh, of the Holy Bible in the New Testament, Proverbs, where it says that you have to uh, deal with a fool on his level, basically? Yeah? I mean, if you call yourself a Christian and you're dealing with a Muslim who is being a fool, using all kinds of insults, doesn't the Holy Bible, if you call yourself a Christian and you know your Bible, doesn't the Bible in Proverbs says clearly to deal with a fool on his kind of level? Sorry, uh, Proverbs Old Testament. Okay, sorry guys, Old Testament. Yeah. So, doesn't... The Bible says that. I mean, if you call yourself a Christian, at least follow your your your, your Bible, right? If you are a, a Muslim who is using insults and you're acting like a donkey, I will treat you like a donkey, right? That's what my Bible commands me to do so, right? So anyway, guys, <clears throat> these political... Christians, those are really doing much more damage than the Muslims today. A lot of Christians here in the West, they think that Christianity is, uh, you know, uh, a soft religion, you know, Jesus Christ never insulted anyone or spanked anyone. I mean, Jesus Christ used the whip on people, man. He turned, he flipped the tables on people's head. What are you talking about? So if you're going to act like a donkey, I will treat you like a donkey, you know? Because my Bible told me to treat you that way. If you're going to be respectful and humble, I'm going to be respectful to you too, right guys? So, you know, these political Christians, uh, if you are watching, this show is not for you, okay? If you call yourself a political correct Christian, my videos and live shows are not for you. Don't, don't watch. No one is forcing the sword of Muhammad <laughs> on your necks to stay here. Right, guys? And if Jesus can do what we do, and Jesus is the perfect example to follow, then we are following his example because he did what we do. Right? Tough love. Exactly, Frau. Tough love. <clears throat> How many people have uh, seen my latest video, my 10 minutes video that I uploaded, guys? Have you watched it? Be honest. Have you watched it? Give me a one if you have watched it. Either now saying the church I used to go to said Allah is the same God. Well, to be honest with you, if I was in your shoes, sister or brother, either now, sorry, I'm not sure if you're a sister or a brother, that church that, uh, that you used to go to, don't ever set foot in that church. If my church would have said the same, I would have not stayed one second, one split second in that church. If that priest or that guy who calls himself the one who is leading the, the prayer in that church, if he would have said the same, I would have not stayed in, my, in, my, in that church for a split second, man. You cannot call yourself a Christian and say that God of the Holy Bible is the same God of Islam. Right? So don't go to that church. I really advise you to not go to that church. Right? Because that priest is teaching really false information. <clears throat> oh, okay, so it seems that a lot of people have watched it. Princess Rainbow, you, you are naughty. How dare you, how dare you that you did not watch my video? Go watch it. Nah. You know, I understand, guys. Uh, but, you know, as I mentioned, guys, for the people who just joined, it's really uh, time-consuming to do short videos, right? Because you want to produce something good when it's short, you know? It should be short, sweet, and detailed. And it takes me a lot of time to <clears throat> produce uh, such videos. So if you didn't see it, guys, you should go watch it. Uh, the video about Aaron and Moses. 
and how we actually spank Muhammad left and right. Guys, let us start today's live show, okay? So today's, uh, <clears throat> today's live show is actually sponsored by the Ministry of Truth against Islam, right? The truth against Islam. The truth against Islam. And, you know, when Muslims ask us, do they, do they say the Prophet has fabricated a lie? The Prophet of Islam has fabricated a lie about Muhammad. We, without any shame, will say, yes, Muhammad did fabricate a lie about God. And today we're going to prove that to you. Right? Someone is saying, Pindakas, Pinda, Pindakas, saying, you smack the daylight out of Muhammad, Rob. Well, uh, well, that's my goal, right? It's my goal to <laughs> to smack Muhammad around, you know, to spank him left and right, so that those poor Muslims, you know, the victims, can leave this man-made code, right? Guys, sorry if I'm not paying too much attention to the live chat, because I cannot teach at the same time and answer all your questions. So now and then I will look to the right. I have two screens, actually. I have a streaming screen, you know, where I see your chat. And on my uh, main screen, so I use two screens. My main screen that you see here is my, you know, teaching screen that I can share with you. But if you if you see my desktop, you're, you're going to get crazy, man. It's like, uh, you know, I, I almost can use it uh, to go uh, back in time, like, uh, you know, a DeLorean. Press a, a button and, uh, you know, beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> Nah, I really actually a very simple setup here. I use a microphone that is only five dollars, and my microphone is like I think at least sixteen years old. I own this mic. I never replaced this mic, and this mic is actually legendary. I've you know I've used it in many of my teachings and debates on Paul Talk back in the days when you know I used to sit in the same room with uh, Christian Prince with Sam Shamoon and many, you know, many other dear brothers and sisters. And man, we did a lot of damage. You know. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim guys? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us live? We are live, you can call us live on air. I mean, how many live streams on YouTube how many live shows do you see on YouTube that allows their audience to call life in? Not many, right guys? How many Muslim apologists do what we do? I mean, Muslim apologists don't dare to do a live show and allow people to call life in. Because they know Islam is a business for them. And when a Christian like me would call in, you know what will happen to them, right? So they will lose face and they will lose business. Like Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab. Buy these black seeds. If you use our code, <laughs> if you use code Mimi or Lili, you will get 10% off the product that you're going to buy. Black seed, brother, is healthy for you, brother. Because Muhammad said that in the Sunnah, brother. Yeah. It is what it is, guys. So, do they say the Prophet of Islam has fabricated a lie about God? Yes, that's what we do, and that's what we say, and we are going to use that against Muhammad in the court of law today. Now, guys, make sure to invite your friends, share today's live show on social media. Invite, guys, invite your friends, share the link on social media. On Facebook, on Twitter, make everybody know that we are live. We're live on air, brother. Please don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. Destroy it. And click on the notification bell to receive notifications, guys. When we go live or upload videos. Now, if we go to the Quran, guys. If we go to the Quran... Chapter 37, Ayah 36, Chapter 37, Ayah 36, you know, 
the people were saying, are we to leave our gods? Those are the pagans of Mecca, right? Are you asking us to leave our gods, our idols, for a mad poet? You know, Majnoon? A mad poet? Muhammad was actually accused in the Quran over and over to be someone who is inventing stories, stealing legend stories, stealing poetry, using poetry. People were not stupid, right? Even the family of Muhammad did not accept him. His uncle his, did not accept His other uncle did not accept him, right? As a prophet. Why is that? His own family didn't accept him. And both of his parents died as mushrikeen. Amina and Abdullah, right? Abdullah, the slave of Allah. So actually Allah existed before Islam. Muhammad actually adopted Allah that, you, that existed before Islam. And when he created Islam, he adopted Allah into this new religion. Man-made religion, man-made cult of Muhammad. So... Abdullah died as a mushrik, Amina died as a mushrika, and they are now in hellfire, and so is his both of his uncles. Right? Abu Lahab and Abi Talib, right? They are all they are all uh, burning in hellfire. Why is that? Uh, Princess Rainbow is asking Rob Christian, what is mushrikin or mushrikun? That that means uh, People who associate partners with Allah, right? If you associate an idol or a god with Allah, so basically you are worshipping, let's say, uh, another god, together with Allah, you are called a mushrik. Alright? So you are a kafir, you are a mushrik. Alright. Now, before we actually go to the further to the scripture, dive into the scripture, I uh, saw this comment that I really wanted to share with you. This was five hours ago, as you see. And this lady, Zainab Maqsood, Zainab Maqsood, she sent me a, a comment. She placed a comment under our comment section, under the videos, right? In the comment section. And she said, Muhammad is indeed a name, not a title. And it does not make him equal to God, to Allah. You forgot to say Allah, right? Next time say, oh my Allah, Allah. Don't say God. So Muhammad is indeed a name, not a title. That's a lie. Zainab, I hope you're watching, Zainab. That's a lie. Muhammad, the, 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 the word Muhammad, right? Muhammad is not a name. It's actually a title. You are wrong, sister. Muhammad means the praised one. It is a title, right? And who, according to the Quran, is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, right? Praise, all praise belongs to Allah. Muhammad should not be praised. So Muhammad actually put himself on the same level of Allah. He made himself equal with Allah when he took that name. Actually, it's not a name, it's a title, right? Muhammad's real name was Qathim, right? Qathim. It's not Muhammad. Muhammad took this title, who is actually the title of God, right? As you see, Alhamd, Muhammad, Hamd. So the root word is Hamd, right? Alhamd or Hamd. Praise. So when Muhammad took the name or the title Muhammad, he made himself equal with Allah. He wanted to be praised. Muhammad wanted to be praised like Allah. And actually, the Sahaba, many Sahaba worship Muhammad. They even drink the blood of Muhammad. They collected the blood of Muhammad in their mouth and suck it. Why would you suck someone's blood if you don't worship him? They collected the saliva of Muhammad, you know, his spit, and they put it on their faces. Thank you, Lasari. God bless you too. Thank you for your donation. God bless your family and loved ones. Thank you. I appreciate your support through donation. So Muhammad actually 
didn't say to them, no, no, don't drink, uh, you know, my blood, don't, don't do it, or don't drink even his pee. One of the ladies, right, she, she drink, you know, Muhammad peed in a, in a, in a bowl, you know, in a cup, and she took it and she drank the, the urine of Muhammad, the pee of Muhammad. Can you, can you imagine, guys? Uh, G, thank you for your uh, donation. God bless you. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate your donations, guys. So Muhammad actually loved to be praised. This is why he gave himself the title Muhammad, the praised one, right? And as you see, actually the, the title of huh? Muhammad is a title, it's not a name. When Muhammad took it, he made himself equal with Allah and the proof is in front of you. Thank you, your moon God, Allah. Thank you for your donation too. Guys, you are really, man, You, thank you so much, guys. You, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your donations. Uh, your moon God, Allah, in the donation in the super chat says, At Rob Christian, you totally deserve our donation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. So guys, <clears throat> as you see, Muhammad wanted to be worshipped and he made himself equal with Allah. He associated himself as a partner with Allah and the proof is in front of you. Right? Don't say you're a Christian, you're like, no, the proof is in front of you. So guys, let me go back. So we refuted point number one, right? We refuted point number one and we showed her that it is a title and Muhammad did make himself equal to Allah. So you have no clue what you're talking about. Then, guys, I hope you're taking notes. This is really important, guys. I'm training you, right? Why did I pick this uh, comment of this lady? Because I'm showing you how to deal with Muslim objections, right? Take notes, please, guys. When I used to learn about Islam many, many, many years ago, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm compared to many of you, I'm really old guy. <laughs> Maybe I'm sound very young. I know many people sending me messages. Rob, you really sound young, man. Are you the, the younger brother of Christian Prince? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's my brother from another mother. So, yeah. And I'm an Arab. This is why we sound the same. We used to sit in the same room, right, many years ago. This is why we have the same debating style. This is why we sound the same. You know, Arabs sound the same and we use the same, you know, words and whatnot. So actually, when you're comparing him with, with my dear brother and older brother, Christian Prince, that's for me, you know, that's a positive thing. I appreciate it, actually. It's an honor to be called or be compared with Christian Prince. Now, point number two, guys. <clears throat> yes, I am an Arab. Rana, an Arabi. Rana, an Arabi, okay? أنا مسيحي أنا مسيحي عربي ابن عربي right uh, I am a Syrian right I am a Syrian but we are Arabs too right I can't say where I'm from but I'm definitely Arab <laughs> guys so don't, you know, let us not go there too much deep into that stuff. It's deep, brother. No, let us continue with this, guys. Let us not get distracted. Point number two, according to this Muslim lady, she says, Muslims do not worship Muhammad. Boy, oh ba boy. She finally, a Muslim, this Muslima refuted Rob Christian, guys. I'm going to shut down my live show. I'm going to delete my YouTube account, guys. Rob Christian, you know, you're, you're, you're finished, Rob. Rob, you're finished. This lady just finished you, brother. Let us go to the Quran to see if you Muslims actually worship Muhammad or not. Quran, chapter 48. Guys, Quran, chapter 48, Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 9. Take notes, guys. Take notes. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ 
وتعزره وتوقره وتسبحه بكرة واصيلا right to believe in Allah and his messenger and you have to honor him to respect him or accessory to assist him the first one is to assist him in battle you have to respect or honor him and you have to glorify him every morning and evening so you have to assist Muhammad in battle you have to honor and respect Muhammad he is the messenger here right and you have to and this is the most damaging one you have to do tasbih the root word is tasbih what to sabbihuhu to glorify who the rasul every morning and evening now rob christian wait wait right rob are you saying that muslims need to worship muhammad every morning and evening yes yes brother that's my intention that's my goal that's my mission to show you this ayah is actually the nail on the coffin of muhammad so you have to glorify who the rasul every morning and evening why the rasul guys why the rasul why muhammad why the messenger why is this word tasbih glorification why is it going back to the rasul because according to grammar rules according to arabic grammar rules if you have a sentence like this and the last mentioned person is the rasul in this case muhammad that means all the words that you see after the rasul go back to the rasul i didn't invent the arabic grammar rules guys don't blame me when i went to school right as a kid when i went to school they taught me the arabic basic grammar rules if the last mentioned person is let's say rob christian all the words go back to rob christian and in this case it's muhammad did you catch it guys so muslims must glorify which is an act of worship muhammad every morning and evening here muhammad dropped a huge nuclear bomb on them all the muslims do you see why muslims actually wanted to drink the blood and put the saliva the spit of muhammad on their faces and drink his urine his pee this is why yeah it means worshiping him because glorification glory is an act of worship tasbih right to sabbih subhan right Muslims always say, hey, how many times have you heard Muslims saying, Subhanallah, glory to Allah. But here you must say, Subhan Muhammad, Subhan the Rasul, Subhan the Rasul, every morning and evening, brother. Do you see it? Yeah, drinking the piss of Muhammad, exactly. You see how actually the Muslims are the ones who are the Mushrikeen guys? Muslims actually have to associate the Rasul Muhammad with Allah, right? And the proof is in front of you. You see how Muhammad actually made himself equal with Allah when he took the title Muhammad, the praised one. So you have to praise Muhammad because he's the praised one and you have to glorify Muhammad because he, according to this ayah, is the one to be glorified. All the words here that you see after the word, all the words that are highlighted here in blue are going back or go back to the messenger. You have to assist Muhammad in battle, right? You have to honor him or respect him and you have to glorify him every morning and evening. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see also, uh, do you understand also why Muhammad is included in the Shahada? Many Quran only Muslims, guys. I have spoken to many Quran only Muslims. They say that the Shahada is a shirk, it's blasphemy. The Shahada, you know, when you become, we want to become a Muslim, 
you say ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa muhammadur rasulullah blah 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 yeah right so you have to include muhammad in the shahada together with allah quran only muslim they understand when you are doing that in the shahada you are associating muhammad as partner with allah because how can you put a mere man right a guy that can die together with allah in one sentence so you have to actually glorify and praise muhammad because he's the praised one every morning and evening and actually when muslims pray guys when muslims pray they they say salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu right when they pray five times a day they say salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu peace be upon you muhammad so when they pray they talk directly to muhammad right do you see how many overwhelming evidence we have against actually who, who is the real god in islam it's muhammad overwhelming evidence that muslims actually pray they glorify they have to praise muhammad every day every morning and evening day in day out and you dare you muslims dare to call us mushrikeen or mushrikun overwhelming evidence that Muslims are not actually called Muslims they have to call themselves Muhammadans this is why Arabic speaking Christians in the Middle East like me like Christian Prince we actually didn't call Muslims Muslims we call them Muhammadans yeah Muhammadan Inta Muhammadan you are a worshiper of Muhammad Inta Muhammadan it doesn't say that RC RC it doesn't say that RC any Muslim do we have any Muslim so guys actually in 2020 stop calling Muslims Muslims they are Muhammadans okay from now on right Call them Muhammadans because we today we are proving to you that they are Muhammadans. They have to glorify, worship Muhammad, praise Muhammad because the, the title, the, the, the word Muhammad means the praised one. Take notes, right guys? So from now on, you know, you have homework. <laughs> ah, guys, they, you know, do what you have to do, guys. I'm, I'm joking with you, but you, you know. This is proof that they are actually Muhammadans. They are worshippers of Muhammad. I mean, when you talk directly in your prayers to Muhammad, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, oh, right? Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. That means you are, you are talking directly to Muhammad. Peace be upon you, Muhammad. Why are you talking to Muhammad? Shouldn't you only talk to Allah when you pray? Abdullah. Ya Abdul, Ya Ya Muhammadan. Why are you talking to Muhammad directly when you pray? That doesn't make sense. You are a mushrik. Ya Muhammadan, Inta mushrik, son of a mushrik. Inta huwa al mushrik, Ibn mushrik. You are the son of a mushrik. How dare you to attack us? How dare you to call Christians mushrikeen? Right? How dare you? Yeah, and when Allah, exactly, Rana, and when Allah, Allah in the Quran says, in Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. I mean, when Allah and the angels pray on, you know, remember Muhammad Hijab when he said, Allah prays for, not to the Prophet. Brother, it doesn't say praise for or to, it's on. You know, Mimi Hijab, who claims to be an Arabic expert, and he wanted to teach David Wood Arabic lessons. This guy doesn't even know Arabic, man. It's ala, right? Ala means pray on. So when Allah is praying on Muhammad, to who Allah prays? That's the one million dollar question that is still not answered for the last 1400 years. Brother? Brother? So as you see guys, we can put two red crosses on point number one. We showed her that this is a title, Muhammad is a title, it's not a name. 
and it proves that Muhammad made himself equal with Allah, right? The praised one, he made himself equal with Allah. But the Quran in chapter 1, ayah 2 says, all praise is for Allah only. So Muhammad became a, a mushrik. He associated himself as partner with Allah. And point number two, Muslims do worship Muhammad. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, we proved you wrong. And let us now go to point number three, guys. Point number three. Do we have any Muslim before I continue, guys? Do we have any Muslim who wants to call us live on air? We are live on air, brother. A Muslim sent me a message. Keep deceiving yourself, brother. Let me call this Abdul. He, he called me. This guy again, you know, uh, let me give him another chance. This guy's from Nigeria. You know him, right? He always stalks me on Facebook. But he always calls from the Wi-Fi of his neighbors. Connecting, brother. Brother, pick up the phone, brother. See, this guy's a waste of time, man. Waste of time. What else is new? Do we have any uh, any Muslim who is really have the courage, man? Are we out of Muslims? Brother, according to Al Jazeera, according to the TV station, the number one TV station in the Arab world, Al Jazeera, 16,000 African Muslims leave Islam a day. That's in a year, that's more than 6 million Muslims only in Africa leave Islam, brother. What about the rest of the countries and the continents on this planet? This is only Africa, guys. 6 million and 205,000 African Muslims leave Islam in a year. What about the rest of the Muslims? Like, let's say in Indonesia, what about the Arab world? What about Saudi Arabia? You know, you have guys, you are not Arabs. M most of you don't know about the Arab world. I'm from Middle East, I know, bro. You have no idea how many Muslims in the heart of Saudi Arabia, right? Where Muhammad, according to the Muslims, comes from. How many Muslims in secret leave Islam? What about the Kurds? Exactly, Rana Hanna. What about the Kurds? Do you know, guys, in this devastated country by civil war, Syria, Iraq, you have no idea how many Kurds, Sunni Muslim Kurds, are leaving Islam. A large community, right, in a city, Kobani, in Syria, they left Islam altogether and they built a church. Those are Sunni Muslims who are tired of this death cult called Islam. They are tired of it. They left Islam together, a large community, and then now they built a church and they are praying as ex-Muslims, new Christians, newborn Christians in their new church in Syria, in the heart of this civil, devastated civil country, civil war country. Can you imagine? Muslims are tired of this uh, cult, man. Only the ones who like to see the, bur the world burning that's what I like to call, you know, a wise man once said, some people just want to see this world burning. And those are the Muslims who want to stay today in Islam. They don't like uh, the truth. They don't like uh, peace. They don't l like the word love. They like to hate people. They like the evil of Islam. They like to have many women. They like to have 72 virgins with big, big breasts. With big melons, brother. Weapons of mass destruction, brother. Bow, bow. You know, melons, brother. Large breasted woman. Right? As the Quran says. Big breasted women, brother. Like I said, guys, some people just want to see this world burning. And those are the Muslims in 2020, unfortunately. Point number three, guys, since we don't have Muslims who are who want to call. Point number three, she says, the Bible's words, 
the Bible's words have been changed. They are not the same as they were when they came down. Uh, Zainab, Zainab, I hope you're listening. I hope you're watching. This last sentence that you put in point number three, did you get that from your Imam? Did you hear this from your Imam or did you actually investigate before you made this claim? Did you actually investigate if that's true, if the Bible has actually been changed? Did you do your own research or are you just repeating like a parrot? Are you repeating what your Imams have told you? Huh? Guys, you, you can be the judge of that. You can be the judge of that. Now let's see guys what the Quran has to say about this. Uh, what does the Quran say? If we go to Surat Al-An'am, chapter 6, guys take notes, take notes. Whenever a Muslim says, the Bible is corrupted, brother, turn it against them in the court of law. Don't go to the Bible, guys. Right? Don't go to the Bible. Go to the Quran and use the Quran against their claim in the court of law. Learn from this. Yeah, she's repeating like a, you know, like a small puppy. She's repeating the words of her shiuch of her ustaz, of her imams. Do you think Muslims actually do some investigation? No, they don't re research what they say. They just repeat what they learned from their imams. So chapter 6, Surat Al-An'am, ayah 115. It says, Perfect are the words of thy Lord in truthfulness and justice. No man, what? No man, again Rob Christian, no man can what? Can change Allah's words. No man, brother? No man. Since the Bible is the word of Allah, since Allah claims that he's the one who sent down the Injil, the Torah, that means no Christian, no man, no Jew, right? No man can change the Bible. So are you, Zainab, Zainab, I'm really sincere with you. Are you saying that Allah is a tiny, puny, false god? Are you calling Allah a liar? Are you calling Allah and your prophet liars when they said no man can change the word of Allah? Right? Are you calling Allah a liar when you say Allah's words? have been changed since the Bible is the word of Allah, no one can change it, Muslims. So when you say the Bible has been corrupted, you are calling Allah and Muhammad liars. On top of that, didn't Muhammad say about the Torah in the Hadith? In a Hassan Hadith, brother. And he swore when he was asked to judge, right? Two Jewish people, a man and a woman, they committed adultery, right guys? They committed adultery. And Muhammad was asked by the Jews to test him. You know what? Jews are smart, bro. They wanted to spank him. Jews are really, really smart people. Even in the time of Muhammad, guys. Now look what the Jews did, guys. Guys, pay attention. Look what the Jews did. They asked Muhammad to judge two people. A, a man and a woman who committed fornication, adultery. So Muhammad was given that command. So Muhammad said, okay, I will do it. Bring me the Torah, said Muhammad. Bring me the Torah. Muhammad was given the Torah. So Muhammad had access to the uncorrupted Torah in its form. Muhammad was sitting on a cushion. He took the cushion from beneath him and he placed the Torah on the cushion. Look how much Muhammad actually loved the Torah, guys. Look how much Muhammad actually loved uh, the Torah. And he said, I believe in you, what? The Torah and the one who sent you, Allah. So here Muhammad sweared on the Torah. And he cast judgment on the two Jews from the Torah. So are you, Zainab, Zainab, are you calling Allah and Muhammad liars? Are you calling your prophet a liar when he swore on the Torah? Huh? 
And what did Allah actually says more, Zainab? What did Allah in the Quran says about the, the gospel, the Injil? Guys, watch, take notes. Chapter 5, Ayah 47. Take a screenshot. Do what you have to do, guys. Take a snapshot. And let the people of the gospel, who are those guys? Any idea who, who the people of the gospel are? Can anyone in the chat tell me who the people of the gospel are? Guys, who are the people of the gospel? Red Prophet, you have to be more specific. Christian Crusader, us, who is us? The Christians, not Tamara, not the Jews. No, 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 no. Not the Jews, the Christians. Okay? This, this is talking about the people of the gospel. Those are the Christians. Right? Not the Jews, the Christians. So, read with me in context, guys. And let the people of the gospel, i.e. the Christians, judge by what Allah has revealed in what? In the gospel, in the Injil. And if we continue reading, it says, And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed there in the gospel, then it is those who are the deviantly disobedient. What is Allah actually saying, you guys? Allah is commanding the Christians, right? The people of the gospel, the Christians, to judge by what the gospel say. And if you don't judge by the gospel as a Christian, then you are a disobedient, lost Christian. Do you see it? It's the proof is in front of you. These are not my words. These are the words of Allah. So-called Allah, right? So, according to this ayah, guys, take notes. You must, as a Christian, judge by the gospel. And if you don't do so, you are an unbeliever. You are lost. So wait, 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 Muhammad, he and Muhammad dropped another nuclear bomb on the Muslim faces. On the Muhammadans, sorry. See, I'm not even listening to my own uh, advice, guys. Muhammad dropped a huge nuclear bomb on the Muhammadans, their faces. He dropped it like, you know, when, you, when the Americans dropped a, a bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that's what Muhammad did. He, he dropped a huge bomb. Why, Rob Christian? Well, because if I as a Christian, guys, learn from this. Train yourself how to deal with the, the Muslim objection when they say, you know, the Bible is corrupted, brother. We showed you that no one can change the words of Allah. And if I as a Christian have to judge by the gospel, that means I have to reject Muhammad. I have to reject Allah and I have to reject Islam. And Actually, this proves that Muhammad is a liar and a fake prophet. Why? Because my gospel tells me that Jesus is the eternal word of God who existed with God from the very beginning as, as his word. And the word was God, right? And that same word that existed with God from the very beginning became flesh and is God and was God. And according to my gospel jesus came and died on the cross to save me he came to serve me he came to serve mankind but the quran and muhammad deny that they refute that basically they are against that so if i have to judge by the gospel i have to reject the teaching of muhammad islam i have to reject muhammad himself and i have to throw muhammad and his allah in the garbage bin Bam! Guys, do you see this disaster that Muhammad created in the Quran? This ayah is one of the biggest weapons, biggest weapons that you can use against Islam and the Muhammadans. Take notes, take a screenshot, guys. Huge, huge, huge disaster. Do you see now why Christian apologists like David Wood, like Christian Prince, like Rob Christian, like myself, why we say the Quran is a disastrous book? It's a messed up book. It's messed up, man. How can you how, how can you follow this nonsense, man? Hey, Rory, I'm good. I hope you're doing fine too. I hope you're okay. Welcome to our live show. We are live on air. Do we have any Muslim guys? <clears throat> Do we have any callers? 
Is there anyone, any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call me? RC, it does not say that RC. Exactly, brother. Where is Fifi? RC, it doesn't say that RC. Guys, I'm drinking water. My voice is almost gone. <clears throat> I need to give myself more re uh, rest, guys. Really, you know. I'm so pa passionate, you know, to share the truth, to expose teaching that is false, like Muhammad's teaching, like this fake prophet, the prophet of the penis, Muhammad. You know, sometimes, you know, you're so passionate, but... If I'm done teaching today, guys, if I'm going to close today's live show, I'm going to give myself at least two, day, two days rest. I'm honest with you guys. But, you know, it is what it is. We're going to continue. Guys, I want to share, before I continue the teaching, I want to share a very small video with you. You know? Uh, and the video... <clears throat> The video that I'm going to show you or about to show you is a guy in a Muslim who we used to debate on Paul Talk in the old Paul Talk days, guys. I used to debate on Paul Talk, teach on Paul Talk, you know. So I'm going to show you. <clears throat> I'm going to show you and maybe give my voice just one minute rest. Maybe that's a good idea. Grab some water. And I want to play this video for you. So, guys, this guy used to debate us, right? And look what happened to him later. Okay, let me let me play the video for you, and you can be the judge. Why some Muslims who start to think, why are they leaving Islam? So this guy left Islam after many hours of debating us. You know, this guy, I, 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 I you know, I know this guy. After many debates, for some reason, he find out that Muhammad is false. Allah cannot be God. Alright? So let me play the video for you. And you're going to be the witness and judge of what happened to this guy. Let me go back. This is lady uploaded this video. You know, th this guy when he said it. His name is Sword of Allah. He used to go by the nickname Sword of Allah. Now let me play the video for you guys. Say who you are. You can just come and sit and listen. So let's see some of the things that are bothering you here. For all of this stuff, have faith in this heaven that flows with rivers of milk and honey. Uh huh. With 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 virgins and servants. And boys, yeah. I. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know either. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm told, that, you know, I'm supposed to be submissive to this God. Mm. What, what the hell kind of person creates things just to serve it, to yeah. be its slaves? Yeah. We're the slaves of Allah. Yeah. Guys, did you catch it? He, he used to be, you know, passionate and debate us. What kind of Allah, what kind of God? You hear the gentleman, right, guys? What kind of God? puts or creates people in Islam, Allah, right? Who they call the creator. What kind of God is this God is? He puts Muslims on this world to only worship him, to be a slave. That's it. You're nothing but a slave. In the eyes of Allah, he created you only for one, purses, one pers pers purpose and one purpose alone. To worship him as a slave. That's it. That's your only connection with Allah. You are a slave. Right? Allah doesn't need you. You need him. You have to worship him. You have to be slave. That's it. That's your only connection with Allah. Right? And he's far, far away. You see this guy always struggling, guys? Let me, let me go back a little. He's struggling, man. And he actually left Islam. And boys, yeah. And young boys, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It, it, 
This is Sword of Allah. I don't know either. His name is Sword of Allah. I mean, I can give you the link, guys, if you like. You know, I'm supposed to be submissive to this God. Mm. What, what the hell kind of person creates things just to serve it? To yeah. be its slaves. Yeah. We're the slaves of Allah. Yeah. For what? Why, why? Yeah, for what? Yeah. Why would we be slaves? You know, in the Bible, we're taught that we're children of God. And that he loves us. Amen. You heard a lady, guys, who, who put this video online, you know. She used to be on Paul Talk too, this, you know, amazing lady. Who has the courage to do what she, what she used to do. This is a very old video, guys, but, you know, someone reminded me of this video. And I forgot to play this video on our last live show. I wanted really to play this video for you. This guy was passionate and he was calling us liars and deceivers like all the Muslims, you know, when we debate about Islam or teach about Islam. You are liars, you are this, you are that, right? RC, it doesn't say that RC, right? And this guy, we, someone told, hey, look at, at this guy, he created a video, he put it on YouTube and he's really struggling and actually we heard this guy left Islam. I mean Muslims, really, really, did Allah only create you so that you are going to be his slave and that's it? Worshipping him and that's it? That's it? Yes, Rob Christian, we're only slaves to Allah. But bro, how can this be God, man? Are you telling me that God of Islam is only a slave master? He is the master and you're the puppet you're, that he is basically playing with you, controlling your life. Is that it? Yes, Rob Christian. Allah is the one who is making you leave Islam. Allah is the one who is making Rob Christian exposing Muhammad. Allah is the, is the one who is doing all that, right? Remember the hadith about Adam, guys? And Moses. Adam said, don't blame me. He said to Moses, don't blame me. Allah put this sin on me 40 years before my creation, right? So I understand that this gentleman started to think this sword of Allah, he used to go by that name, why he left Islam when he started to think. But God of the Holy Bible is a loving God. He created us, mankind, and he called himself our heavenly father. He created us to share his infinite love with us. This is why when we got disconnected, when we got, when we separated from God, right? We were the cause of that. When Adam and Eve sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, they sinned against God. Mankind from that moment separated from God. To fix, to fix the connection, God came with an awesome plan. And who can only fix it better than God himself. We are, you know, we are helpless. We, you know, God doesn't need us. We need God, right? So God, out of his perfect, infinite love, he came with the perfect plan to go, to come as himself in the flesh, right? Through his sinless blood to save us. God only asks for one thing, only through grace you are saved, not by your works, not by, you know, praying 200 times a day. That's not going to save you, my friend. Only God himself can save you. So God told us, accept this gift, accept my grace, right? And you'll be saved. Glory, glory to our Lord and Savior. The Word of God, God Himself, who came into the flesh, i.e. Lord Jesus Christ. We need Him. He doesn't need us, guys. We need Him. We need God in our lives. And as you see, this Muslim, ex-Muslim gentleman, he thought, hey, uh, why, why, why is Allah creating us to be His slaves? That's it. Yes, that's it, bro. That's what Islam teaches. Thank you, Toothy Fruity. Thank you so much. God bless you and your family too. <clears throat> uh, Vanessa called me. 
I'm really not done teaching, you know. I don't like to accept calls from Christians at the moment. I want to do that later, but, uh, you know, since we don't have Muslims who are calling us, let, let me call this lady back. Let me call our dear sister Vanessa back. Hmm. What happened? Let me try again. Hmm. Uh, Vanessa is maybe busy or something, or maybe her connection is not good. Uh, Vanessa, send me send me a call if you want to call me, then I will call you. Okay. Send me a message. Oh. Okay, she's calling me now. Hello, dear sister Vanessa. You're live on air. Welcome. Yes, hello, brother. Good evening. Hey, hello, sister. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you for the last uh, clip you uh, put online. That is with uh, Aaron and um, Moses. Ah, I appreciate it. So you're welcome. Yes, my pleasure. Thank sister. you. My pleasure. So, yes. So, brother, what um, I want to ask is, yeah, could it be that um, Muhammad himself was confused? Why I said that is, when his uh, first wife, the old wife, Khadija, Khadija yeah. yeah, was yeah. dying, yeah. Muhammad told her to greet his wife for, for, uh, for him. And Khadija was like, who? And he said, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mm. I remember Christian Prince reading that in, uh, from the Adit. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to look for such things in the Adit. Yeah, maybe, you know? maybe you can look for Khadija or, uh, you know, and uh, the word Maryam and maybe then you can find it. I, I actually uh, have no idea about this story, to be honest with you. I know a lot about Islam, but I can't know all the details, right? So I have to look it yes. up myself. So yes. I, I have no idea, but to be honest with you. But yes, Khadija, you know, she was his first wife and Muhammad didn't dare to marry any other woman. So he waited till she died. She was he, he was younger than her, right? He waited till till yes, she sorry. she died, and then he started to yeah. to you know have sex with all kind of women left and right. As long as she was alive, he was like a small kitten, right? Meow, right? Yes. Like a yes. meow, yeah. So yes. he waited. Till, yeah. So he, she waited. She was his boss, right? So he waited till she died, yeah. and then he started yes. to have sex with many different women. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I, remember, I remember that very well. That yeah. um, Christian Prince said, um, read it from the Adit. I think. Wait. I think that, you're talking. Uh, you're talking. I think you're talking about. Uh, I, I think that's what you're talking. Maybe you're not telling me the right story. Actually, uh, the story goes like this: Muhammad gets the best of the best, right? Right. Muhammad always in Islam gets the best of the best. And according to Islam, if he gets the best women, right, he will get the best of the best women. So uh, Muhammad, when he is going to go to uh, to the brothel of Allah, right, the pimp Allah in his sex uh, Jannah, Muhammad yeah. will have the best women. Who are the best women in Islam? Those are uh, the wife of Pharaoh, right, Asya, and since uh, Maryam, who they, you know, who, who Mary, they call her Maryam. Yes. She, she's, she, since she's the one who is mentioned in the Quran from all the women, Muhammad will get her too. So that's I, th I think that's what you're talking about, right? If I'm not mistaken. I don't know, but I yeah, just I think that's the yeah, I, I was, think that's what Christian Prince I was also listening. Yeah, yeah. I, I was also listening when, yeah. the, when the other brother called yeah. and was uh, given that um, hadith uh, place that uh, yeah. Aaron and uh, Moses are from the same mother. Yeah. And then I remembered, actually, Christian Prince talked about something like this, that yeah. when his wife was dying, I yeah. remember him no, saying, uh, can yeah, you imagine? Yeah, sister, your, just a second. Your, Amazing Grace in the live chat. If you, yeah, sister, just a second. I'm talking to Amazing Grace in the live chat. Amazing Grace, yeah. not Mary the Copt. No, Mary, the mother of Jesus. So Muhammad will 
have sex with Mary, the mother of Jesus, which is a huge insult for us. Look how disgusting Muhammad is, how evil this so-called prophet is. He is insulting Mary, right? He's, he wants to have Mary as sex partner in Jannah and the married wife, Asia, the married wife of Pharaoh. Pharaoh. This, is this a man of God or is this guy uh, looking only after his penis? You, you can be the judge of that, guys. Yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe it was, maybe it was the, uh, the, the, the wife of Pharaoh. But mm -hmm. I know that I was, I was so disgusted with that thing. Yes. When, um, when Christian Prince said that, I thought, what? Your wife is dying and all you can think about is yeah. uh, say, say hello to my wife for me when you get to Jannah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. I know I was, I, I remember I was quite disgusted with that. Mm. Yeah. It was Mary, but now that it's Pharaoh's wife, it could have been yeah. Pharaoh's wife as well. Yeah, and I, Vanessa, I, I don't do you know think, any longer. Yeah, what do you yeah. think about, furthermore, what do you think about this gentleman that we just played uh, his video? You know, this is used to go by the name Sword of Allah. Did you see the, the, the small video that I yes. just played? What do you think yes. about it that what he's saying? Why, he, you know, the, is, is this a good reason to leave Islam? What do you think? You know? whatever, whatever reason he has, brother. Yeah. As long as he leaves that cult, because I see that cult as, you know, if you don't leave the place, yeah. you are you, you are you are entrapped. You know, as long as he leaves the cult, yeah. the next prayer will be to start to pray for him that if he doesn't know Christ yet, mm -hmm. that he, God, God will find him out. Yeah. You know, and I want to appeal to you and to your and to your uh, audience as well. Mm -hmm. The Christians that are listening, there is this uh, this lady that uh, that sent you an SMS before we started. Yeah, Hatun, right? Yeah, yeah our dear sister so, Hatun, yeah, she sent me a message. Yeah, yes, she was at the speaker's corner. I think some of uh, this, uh, whether today or yesterday, I don't know where it was. Yeah, but um, he was asking. She was asking um, uh, Ali Dawa. Yeah, if Muhammad was a false prophet and uh, Islam was false religion. And you know, Ali Dawa, as uh, Muslims always do, Ali Dawa didn't have any any uh, decent argument. He started uh, to go on a on a cursing party that Allah should destroy him if uh, uh, Muhammad is false prophet and um, and uh, well, uh, Islam is false religion and they should destroy him and he should do this and he should curse him. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to pray for that uh, man. You know why exactly. I said that? Yeah. Because they do not realize that you cannot invoke the God, the true God, to 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 want to confirm, to, to want to cover your shame. Amen. Muhammad Amen. did this yeah. and God and God caught up with him. Uh, what's his name? Ahmed did that, did the same thing, and God caught up with him. Yeah. So I want to appeal that even though he is on the other side that God will open his eyes and God will bring him to the saving knowledge of Christ. Yeah. That is Ali, Ali yeah. Dawa now. Yeah, pray pray for these people, you know, so that God shines his glory, his, his light upon these people who are actually are seeking for the truth, right? If you are a sincere Muslim and you are actually seeking to find the true God, the truth, then I'm sure, you know, our God is a merciful and loving God. I'm sure God will call upon you, right? Many Muslims have seen Jesus. They have seen uh, Mary in their dreams and they left Islam and became Christians, right? You know, yes. if you are really sincere and you as a Muslim, you know, I, I truly believe if you are a Muslim and you are a seeker of truth and you ask, when you pray, Please God, if you are there, if you are there and you call yourself God and you can show me the truth, then please God, I'm seeking for you. Please show yourself to me. Talk to me and I'm sure our living holy God will, will answer. I'm sure of it. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, I don't, I don't know if uh, Ali Dawa is really looking for God. Because I somehow no, 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 my no, no. mind. Ali Dawa, Ali Dawa is only trying to send. 
Ali Dawa is doing business, sister. He's always saying, yes, I... buy the black seeds and use my code and you will get 10% yes. off. Islam for them is business. Have you seen the yes. car that he's driving? Have you seen Ali yes. Dawa? You know, say Ali Dawa, Muhammad Hijab. They, they, they want to do business. It's about business. Use and this code and, 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 and buy the black seed. Go to uh, Natural Blend. Or, well, I, I'm not sure what that website is that, that, that is sponsoring them. Use this code and you get 10% off for the black seed. I mean, come on, are you doing business? Oh, yes. It's not only that. There was a time it was, it was like fighting himself in the video that I was watching. And he was telling the people, donate money, donate money. Yeah. Muslims are... In, they are living in thousands donate money so that muslims don't live i'm thinking exactly. what has that got to do with muslims living but yeah. you know for him crossing himself yeah. Yeah. destroyed by allah yeah. if if uh, uh, muhammad is not a true prophet invoking the wrath of god upon his own life that yeah. is why i thought i need to pray for this guy yeah. for god to open his eyes we, we brother, pray for all the truth seekers, sister. Pray, we pray. We always do that, right? Real Christians always do that. I mean, uh, if we uh, if we not can we, if we cannot pray for such people, right? How can we call ourselves Christians? We should pray for those people so they can be saved. And I know many Muslims are actually in need. You know, they are seeking of truth, but they don't know how. So I hope you know? I find so you. Exactly. They don't know how. Yes. Yeah. They don't know how. No. So I thought I thought you would know the passage I'm talking about, but yeah. somehow you helped me. So I will yeah. continue to look for it. No problem. Um, uh, Khadija and uh, the wife of Pharaoh. Maybe yeah. that's the one. Uh, no, no, Mary, 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 the mother of Jesus, and Asia, the wife of uh, Pharaoh. Those two women. Asia is her name. Yeah, Asia is the wife of Pharaoh, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Yeah. Those are going. It's an insult to our mother, mother of our Lord. It's an insult. It's a shame. It's disgusting that, you know, Muhammad wants to have sex with them in Jannah. And I yeah, think, but, uh, I think which uh, Phil, Phil Herrera put, I think he put, just put a link on uh, the live chat. So, Vanessa, if you want to have the link, I think you can click on the link of our beloved admin, Phil Herrera, and you can read about it there. All right. Thank yeah. you very much, brother. No problems. Thank you for calling. Stop. Have a blessed day. Stop. Thank you for calling. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Guys, guys, uh, please give me a uh, couple of minutes, maybe two minutes. Uh, I need to grab myself some water. Okay, guys? Take a small break. One, two minutes. I'll be right back because my throat is killing me. Be right back. Okay, guys? All right, guys, I'm back. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Can you hear me? I'm back. Where's Rob? I'm here, brother. Rob, you're 
finished, you coward! <laughs> yeah, I uh, I uh, took some water, guys. I went to take some water. I was out of my water. Sound is loud and clear. Welcome, Allah praise. Welcome, welcome everybody who just joined. Welcome. Nice to have you here. We're actually not even in the middle of my teaching, so I'm going to be here with you. Okay, guys, let me drink some water. Don't worry, be happy, Rob Christian is with you guys. I drink with, on your health and the health of your families. And I hope we will have Muslims today who are going to call us. We are live on air, guys. If we have Muslims, we have at least six dislikes. That means we should have at least six Muslims who can call us. Whiskey. No, no, no whiskey for me today, guys. <clears throat> so let us continue, guys, the teaching. If you have seen my video, guys, if you have seen my video <clears throat> about Aaron and Moses you have seen how we have spanked Muhammad during the during during the 10 minutes video you know that was a really big bust a big spanking that we gave to Muhammad the prophet of Islam Rory says, Rob Christian, the Quran calls Jews and Christians filthy. So why are Muslim men allowed to marry their women? Well, according to the Quran, Muhammad says you can have uh, Jews and Christian women. You can have sexual intercourse with them. There's nothing called marriage. Nikah, sexual intercourse. But at the same time, if we go to a different ayah, Right? If we go to a different area, it says, don't marry the mushrikat. Since we are nejis, we are filthy, we are mushrikat, we are mushrikun, mushrikin. And the Quran says, don't marry the mushrikat. And we are called mushrikin because if we go, let me show you. that This has nothing to do with my topic of today, but you know, no problem. We are going to show you. Since we are called mushrikeen, basically, in the Quran, let me prove it to you. It says, and the Jews say, do you see it? Guys, do you see the screen? Is the screen showing? Give me one if you're still with me, guys. I'm going to answer, basically, or complete uh, what Rory just said. Chapter 9, Surah at tawbah Ayah 30. And the Jews say, Uzair is Allah's son. This is a really funny translation. Right? But let's go. Uzair is the son of Allah. Child of Allah. And the Nazarenes who are the Christians. According to the Muslims. Say the Messiah is a child of Allah. Guys. Do you see it? So we are calling the Jews. No Jew have ever done that. But anyway let it go. Since the Jews are calling Uzair, the son of Allah, and the Christians call the Messiah, Al-Masih, Allah's son, that's their saying with their mouth. So those are the Jews and the Christians who are saying that, resembling the saying of those who disbelieved all for time. May Allah curse them, may Allah destroy them. This is a funny translation, let me switch. You see it? May Allah damn them. May Allah destroy them. There's nothing called Ezra. It's Uzair. Do you see it? It's not Ezra. It's Uzair. There's nothing called Ezra in the, in the Arabic text. You know? Do you see it? So may Allah damn them. To who is Allah talking? I don't know. But let it go. So we are actually associating Uzair. Right? We are associating Uzair. I, you know, these translations, man, Muslims, stop doing taqiyya in your translations. Do you see it, Uzair? May Allah ruin them. So since we are associating partners, i.e. Uzair and the Messiah with Allah, 
we are mushrikeen, right? Do you understand? When you are associating partners with Allah, you are called mushrikeen. Right? And according to the Quran, you are not allowed to marry or have sex. There's nothing called marry. When you have when you are not allowed to have sex with mushrikat, that means you cannot marry Jewish and Christian ladies. Did you catch it, guys? All right? You're not allowed to do so. Let me grab you the ayah where it says that. I think it's chapter 2, ayah. Let's see. I think 200. Okay, I found it. Let me show you. Do not, there's nothing called Mary. Right? Nikah is the word here. Do you see it? Do not have sex with mushrik women. Do you see it? Unless they believe. So how are you allowed to marry Jews and Christians while the Quran claims that Jews and Christians are associating partners with Allah. Calling Uzair and the Messiah the son of Allah. May Allah ruin them. May Allah destroy them. Do you see the contradiction? So here Muhammad, you know, in chapter 5, and that's the chapter they go to. Chapter 5, ayah 5. You see it? And permitted to you are chaste women, i.e. the Jews and the Christian ladies, be either from among the believers or from among those those who have received the book before you. When we ask the Muslims who are those, they say those are the Jews and the Christians. So here Muhammad did a huge poo-poo. He contradicted himself. He spanked himself in chapter 5, ayah 5. And in chapter 9, ayah 30. Right? And if you go back to back with chapter 2, ayah 221. You will see that you are, as a Muslim, not allowed to marry mushrik women, i.e. the Jews and the Christians. So Muhammad, make up your mind. Allah, make up your mind. Can you marry Jewish and Christian women? Yes or no? Well, uh, I don't know, brother. Allah in one chapter says you are allowed and the other chapter says you are not allowed. I think Muhammad was confused. You know, you have heard our dear sister Finessa, the, the lady that just called me. Muhammad was confused. Yes, Muhammad is confused. One time he says this, other time he says that. You see it? Here, don't marry Mishrik women. Here, you are allowed to marry. Oh, you are allowed to marry Mushrik women in chapter 5. Oh man, what's happening? Chapter 5, Ayah 5. You see it? And permitted to you are the women of the book who are the Jews and the Christians. <clears throat> you see the, the contradiction here? Contradiction 101. Contradiction in the Quran 101. Guys, this is this has nothing to do with my topic today. You know, but let me continue, guys. And I wanted to address one question of our brother Rory. So I hope you took some notes, guys. Guys, did you like did you like that? I hope you benefited from that. I hope you took notes. I really hope you took notes. Sarah Sarah Mita Lian channel says this is great, Rob Christian. Ha 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 ha. Well, I'm happy that you are happy, sister. Salahuddin al Ayyubi. Salahuddin al Ayyubi. I mean, Salahuddin. You consider him, guys. Salahuddin, the name that the nickname that he's using, was one of, according to Muslims, one of the biggest, you know, generals, one of the biggest heroes of Islam. You know, he was a huge commander. You know. Brother, if you are comparing yourself to him, pick up the phone, call me. 
Show me the courage that Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi had. Yalla, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Salah al-Din, exactly for her. That's the name in the English. Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, Salah al-Din. If you are using his name, be courage enough, like him, pick up the phone and call me. Show me your bright shoulders, brother. Show me that you are a man. Be a man, pick up the phone and call me. We're live on air. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian. Call me. Talk and text is cheap, brother. Rob Christian, you are a liar. You're finished. You coward, Rob Christian. RC, it doesn't say that RC. I mean, come on. Man. Talk is cheap, brother. See? What a coward. You are a Jaban ibn Jaban, ya Salah al-Din. You are not even worthy to carry that name. Face to face, brother. Why? You want to date me? Bro, listen. I'm a married guy. I'm not into men. I don't like men. If you are looking for that, go to a club. Go to a homo bar. There you, you will see many men face to face. Face to face, brother. Bro, I'm not into men. I'm a married guy. You want to debate me? Call me. It's very easy. Windows 10 has Skype installed. Or if you, you want to use an iPad or an iPhone, download the app. It will, you will get it in under one minute. Add me to your Skype. Call me. And let us debate. Don't ask for my face. I'm not into guys, man. If you want to you wanna be gay, that's your business. I have nothing to do with that. So, guys, since this is a coward, he's a coward. He will not call me. Let us continue. Back to our teaching, guys. <clears throat> Moses and Aaron. You have seen my video, maybe. Maybe not. But we'll try to go into more details, guys. Right? Where are the Muslims, man? Where are the Muslims? Malik hasn't called me. Let me see if this guy, if we can contact this guy. Malik Hazim, I'm calling you. Hello? Yeah, hello. You're live on air, sir. Welcome. Yeah, how are you? I'm, f I'm fine. How are you? Sorry, there's a delay in the video. I'm sorry. One second. Yeah, mute YouTube, please. Please mute YouTube. Oh. Yeah, mute YouTube. Yeah, because I'm hearing myself double. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. Welcome. Are you a Muslim or a Christian, my friend? Yeah, I'm hearing no, you. No, I'm okay. Are you are a Muslim? Hello? What happened? Oh, he hang up. What is that? That's deep. Let me call him back. He forgot to say inshallah guys. He forgot to say inshallah. That can happen sometimes. Make sure to say inshallah. Okay. Hello Hazem? Hello Hazem? Yeah. Do you hear me? Okay. Hello. Hey, yeah, I lost you for some reason. No, I'm I have bad internet connection. Sorry about oh, that. Okay, okay, okay. Welcome. You're a Muslim, I, from what I understand, right? Right. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so um you said that did Muhammad create Islam and do we have any proof for that? So I just wanted to say like when you were asking, are you asking like do we have proof for um, for Muhammad being a prophet? Yeah, why, why are according to you, why Muhammad is a prophet? Go ahead. I'm listening. Um, well, there's many reasons. Well, well, the, for the first reason is because in Surah Al-Isra, there's a prophecy about Israel, and so the, like one of the things that makes a uh, makes a prophet a prophet is if he's able to um, bring uh, prophecies in the future which no one can know. It must be fulfilled, right? Right. It must. It must be. Okay. What is yes. what is what is what is yeah. the, the ayah saying? Yeah. So it, it's a very long research. Um. It, it, do you know a, a sheikh? His name is Bassam Jarrar. No, I don't know. I never heard of him. Oh, okay. Um, but here, I can try to explain it to you. Uh, in Surah Al-Isra. Which uh, ayah? Which is, ayah? Uh, Surah Al-Isra, verse... Uh, it starts from verse number four. Okay. Okay. But then it, but then it, but then it goes uh, like uh, up to verse 
up to verse, uh, I believe, 6. And then there's one at the end of 104. Verse 104. Okay, but uh, explain, explain. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah, so... The, okay, so it says... That you will surely cause corruption in the land twice. And there's been a lot of tafsir, like for example, like Jalalain and then other tafsir that explain it. However, these uh, explanations are very, like, don't make sense that much. And so, uh, from what we see today and from, in, from history, uh, the interpretation interpretation I'm gonna give it kind of makes a lot more sense. It's not my interpretation. It's actually um the sheikh I was saying. His, uh, get to the get, this, a, get to the point, my friend. Uh, we don't have all yeah. day. Get to the point. Okay. okay. So the point is, the verse number five. It says, "Faida jaa wa adulahuma." This is when the Assyrians and the Babylonians they came in. This isn't a prophecy because it came before Islam, right? So, anyways. Yeah. So where's the uh, prophecy? Where's the prophecy? It's in number six and then number seven. Number six, number seven. Okay. So, ثم رددنا لكم القرة is talking about the state of Israel because then because they got the return and there's no like nowhere else in history where they got their state back. وامددناكم بأموال. This is very obvious. You know, they get they get their money. وبنين. And then وجعلناكم أكثر نفيرة. Yeah. Many numbers. Yeah. Many numbers. No, no, but nafira akthara nafira doesn't nafira doesn't mean numbers. Akthara nafira nafira is um like uh like soldiers or um yeah yeah like we, manpower yeah yeah, yeah. Right. wealth yeah okay go ahead yeah this, and so my point is this is like a prophecy which uh, came true in 1948, but then there's a, the prophecy comes back <laughs> in verse 104. Where does it say that in the Quran, my friend? No, it's no. This is the interpretation number my six. My friend, my friend. How how are you how how are you saying this is a prophecy? Uh, what happened? To, uh, what did the Nazis do to the, to the Jews? You, did you forget? I mean, the the Jews have have lost their country, you know, to the to the Muslims, and then they they gain it again, and they again they were uh, attacked by the by the by the Muslims. What what are you talking about? Why does this say? Why is the Quran talking about uh, World War Three or or World War Two or World War? What are you talking about? Where? Why is this prophecy? Are you are, are, are you are you adding? Are you telling me that your uh, you mentioned this scholar name or whatever his name is? Are you saying that this guy is adding to his own Quran? Is that no, what you're saying? Like it's an a like where, for example. Where, where does it say? Where does it say that? The, no, this is the interpretation. Can you show me the? Can you show me 1945? In any Jalalain? Yeah, you said 1940. What? 1941? 45? 1948. 1948. Where, can you show me one tafsir of the Quran? Jalalain, Ibn Abba, any, any, any tafsir? Al Qurtubi, where it says 1948. No, no, I'm not saying, no, I'm saying these people didn't actually say that it was going to happen in 1948. Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to you. Go ahead, show me, the, show me the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, of Al Jalalain, uh, Qurtubi, oh, but, any, any tafsir. No, no, but these, I know, but the tafsir are just opinions. They, they're not like ma'sumin. Ah, not... opinions. So where does it say that in the Quran then? No, it doesn't say in the Quran. It's just like interpretation from what we see today. Okay, you're, 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 actually everyone can interpret what he likes. I can now grab the Bible or I can, I can right. grab any book and say, hey, you know, this is what I, how I see it. And this is how I, my friend, uh, isn't, isn't it, to be honest with you, let us be sincere. If you okay. as a Muslim. Add your own words. You do bid'ah. Is that haram or halal to do bid'ah? Yes, it's haram. It's haram. Okay, thank you. My right. friend, I have a question for you. Since you, right. are, you're, since you are a Muslim, I'm a, I have a question for you. Doesn't the Quran actually challenge uh, us uh, to provide one ayah like the Quran? Yeah. Okay. Um, let, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to go for this challenge, okay? Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, provide... Let me, yeah, the Quran says, uh, if you think that you, you know, let, let you produce one ayah like the Quran, right? That's the challenge, right, of the Quran? Produce mm -hmm. just one ayah like, okay. Right. Let me like produce, let me produce an ayah like the Quran. Okay, mm -hmm. here, here. No, but can let I me, tell you Let me recite, let me, I'm, I'm going to invent an ayah now, right now. People are listening. I'm going to invent an ayah like an ayah in the Quran. And I'm, I'm going to ask you what you think about it. Here, I'm going to ask. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahu Akbar. And then insert in him a chain, 
in his anus and extract it from his mouth. What do you think about this challenge? Did I just won this challenge? What do you think about this? It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, to be honest, it doesn't really sound like very. It's not. It, it what do you think? Sound right. Is this? Do you think this is? Do you think? What do you think? Is is this evil? When when I say that. I believe you're referring. To, is are you referring to Tafsir ibn Kathir? No. What What do you think about this? It doesn't this, sound like you meant the challenge. How? Why not? Well, number one, it's not an Arabic, and number two, it like it was just one verse. And besides, even if it it, is like, this, it, it sounds, but it is sounds this, like is this is this from God or is this from a human? What do you think? From a human. Okay. So, guys, you heard him. It's from a, a human. Okay. Let me show you, since you said this is from a human, this is your Quran, my friend. Chapter 69, Ayah 32. And then insert in him a chain, insert the chain in his anus and extract it from your from his mouth. This is Quran. Wait, can you go to can I see wait, wait what what verse is this and what surah is this? Chapter 69, Ayah 32. Okay, let me just go to it. Surah 69, verse 32. Yeah. Okay. Let me just take a look. I just met, you know, uh, you just said it. This is this is from me. So, guide, according to this gentleman, this ayah is not from Allah. This ayah is from a man like Rabbi So, Allah if I can, if I can say <laughs> say it like this, that means the Quran is not from uh, Allah. There's nothing called Allah. This yeah, is, but one second. Man, according it, to you, I didn't say it. You said it. Yeah, it's yeah, on, no, no, it's no, on no. tape, right? It's recorded. But then, but then you said insert the chain in his anus, and but that's not that's not what the verse says. That's an isn't that an interpretation? <clears throat> Do you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see it, but then I also I also went to the website where the Quran the I see I see the Arabic, but it just says then into a chain whose length is 70 cubits insert him, but it doesn't say it just says tumma fi sil salatin dharaha sab'una dhira'an fasluquhu, but where does it say um insert the chain in his anus and extract it from his mouth? It's in front of you. It's on a screen. Do you see it? But that's, I don't know, but this is the Tafsir ibn Abbas. Yeah, who's, not, the, who's Ibn Abbas according to Muhammad? That's the, that's the, that, that's a companion. He's the ink of, uh, of the Ummah, right? Yeah, he, the ink of the Ummah. Yeah, the, the guys, the ink, the best guy to go to according to Muhammad when it comes to Tafsir for the Quran. So, to the, according to the number one guy, according to the number one guy, it means Allah is going to insert a chain in somebody's anus and he will take it out of his mouth okay so and you said this is from this, this cannot be from god this is from a man like you i mean you everybody this is, this is, hurt you is, i know but this is an interpretation the quran doesn't say that yeah well the number one guy said it so you know i don't want to waste my time guys i mean you heard the gentleman this is not from allah this is from someone like you okay this is what it is guys i, I don't want to waste my time with this guy Brother, this is the number one guy according to Muhammad. He is the ink. According to Muhammad, guys, Ibn Abbas is the ink, right? The ink of the nation. I.e. is the number one guy when it comes to tafsir of the Quran. So are you saying you know better than uh, Ibn Abbas? Huh? Allah is going to, ins to insert a chain in your anus and take it from your mouth? Brother, this, 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 you know, hey, you heard the gentleman, this is not from God, this is from you, Rokish. Okay. Then, uh, <clears throat> according to you, the Quran is not from God. Allah does not exist. And the Quran is words of Muhammad. Yeah. Is this, is this porn? Is this, is this porn? What is this, man? Is this God talking? Anyway, this is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Let me go back to my teaching, guys. <clears throat> you see? My voice is gone. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway. So guys, you must have uh, saw my uh, latest video about Moses and Aaron, right? You see, this is this from the movie, The Ten Commandments. It's a movie from 1956. I really uh, enjoyed this very long video, you know. Back in the old days, they used to, you know, make long videos. And I think this was one of the... You know, biggest movies, most expensive movies about the story of Moses that they did 
in uh, I think it's Hollywood, right? A Hollywood movie. Yeah, great film. Someone is saying, and uh, I like it. I like this. So I this I use this also in that short video that I made for you guys. But let me go more into details and explain it here live on air. Okay. So I I want you to pay attention. Uh, maybe if you are interested, take your pens out, guys. Maybe you can benefit from it. So the story goes like this, guys. <clears throat> right? God <clears throat> commands Prophet Moses to deliver or release the Israelite nation, right, guys? From the Egyptian bondage to the promised land. So God tells Moses, you know, go <clears throat> uh, to Pharaoh and command him to release the Israelite nations who used to be slaves at that time, right? They were the slaves of the Egyptians. They used to work for the Egyptians as slaves. So God told Moses, right, to f his fellow Israelites to save them and take them out of Egypt into the wilderness, across the Red Sea and into the desert of Paran, right? on the border of Canaan but <clears throat> before we go there guys before we continue with that if Muslims claim that this same God of Moses is Allah you have to deal with a couple of disasters that we have to go through right disaster number one is if we go to Exodus chapter 3 of the Holy Bible, right? Chapter 3, verse 15. When God is talking to Moses, he said, God said, moreover, to Moses, You, Moses, you, Moses, shall tell the children of Israel this. Yahweh, that's the name of our holy God, guys. Jehovah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you, right? To the Israelites. So here God commands Moses as his prophet to go and to the children of Israel and tell them that Jehovah, Yahweh, sent him to you. This is my name. So the name, guys, take notes. The name of this God is Jehovah, right? Jehovah, Yahweh. This is my name forever. Wait. According to God, this is God talking. His name forever will be Jehovah. Right, guys? Yahweh. And this is my memorial to all generations, says the Lord. So that's his name forever and ever. But when we ask the Muslims, guys, when we ask the Muslims, what's the name of your God? They will say it's Allah. But wait a second. Are you telling me, Muslims? Are you telling me that for some reason you claim that it's the same God? Are you telling me that this Allah of yours changes mind like a kid in a candy store? Huh? Allah changes mind like a kid in a candy store. He changes his name. When he said, this is my name forever and ever, suddenly this Allah changes his mind like you and me, like a human being, and still claim to be God? How is this? We are talking about a God, about a so-called perfect God, right guys? How can you call yourself God, but at the same time change your mind? Should we take such a God seriously, guys? I mean, Muslims, think with me here. Can God change his mind and have a cake and eat it too at the same time? You can be the judge of that, guys. Can God change his mind? That's the one million dollar question. Can you be consistent? Can you claim to be God and at the same time change your mind over and over? Someone says no. Why no? Because God cannot call himself God and change his mind like us, like human beings. Right? 
I mean, it's okay to change your mind as a human. We are humans. We change our mind every second, right? Like a kid in a candy store, when he goes with his mom to a candy store, and he wants, you know, his mother wants to buy him some candy. You know, the first candy that he will see, ah, oh, I want to have this one. Later, maybe he sees an ice cream or a big popsicle. Mom, I want that. Have, I want to have this candy. I don't. He drops that small candy that he saw the first time, right? And he picks up the bigger one, the more delicious one. Are you saying that this this is Allah? This you know is Allah like a kid in a candy store? Is that what you're saying, Muslims? Basically, Allah can change his mind like humans. How dare you, Muslims, to claim that Allah is our God, Jehovah, Javeh, and think that we are not going to bust you, your prophet, fake prophet, and fake moon idol. Can God make a claim, says, this is my name forever, and then you claim, you Muslims claim, this is the same God and change his mind? This is a huge bust for Allah. This is a huge bust for the fake prophet of Islam. You cannot be consistent and say Allah is God, but at the same time Allah can change his mind. He says, this is my name forever, Jehovah. Suddenly, his name is changed in Islam and his name is Allah. Who is Allah? God just said, my name is Yahweh. This is my name. The God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Suddenly, according to the Muslim, Allah changed his name. I mean, come on. This, this, you, can, you can't sell it to me. You can't sell it to anyone who is using logic and tell me this is God speaking. So here, Muhammad, actually, when he used Allah, who already existed in the pre-Islamic world right in and the pagans of mecca used to worship allah as the supreme one idol muhammad took that name and he made it sound like uh, you know the same god he, he wanted to convince the jews and the christians that this is the same god but he actually forgot one very important verse in the holy bible in the old testament in the torah it's exodus chapter 3 verse 15 this is my name forever and ever. Muslims, think, think. I know it's hard for you Muslims to think because the Quran commands you to not ask questions. But I tell you guys, to the people who are listening, the moment Muslims start to think, they will leave Islam. Trust me. The moment a Muslim starts to think, he will leave Islam. Right? You're such a liar. Zep, call me, Zep. Call me, call me. We are alive. Call me. Show me where I'm lying, you donkey. Show me. We are alive. Call me. See. Don't ask questions. Chapter 5. Yes, Philip. Chapter 5, I, 101. 101. Chapter 5, 101. Don't ask questions. The moment Muslims start to ask questions and think, they will leave Islam. So can Allah change his mind and have a cake and eat it too? Certainly not. You cannot claim to be God and change your mind over and over. Certainly you cannot claim to be the same God of the Old Testament and get away with it. Now if you go to chapter 4 of the Quran, guys, let us continue. If we go to chapter 4 of the Quran, to ayah 163 to 164, it says, and the mentioned prophets are, and we reveal to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, Solomon, David, and Moses. Now pay attention, guys, pay attention to the names Aaron and Moses, okay? Aaron and Moses. All right, guys, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. So Aaron and Moses. <clears throat> now if we go to another ayah of the Quran, chapter 1953, ayah 53, we can read 
and we gave him out of our mercy his brother who the brother of Moses Aaron as a prophet so here according to the Quran guys not according to our Bible according to the Quran this is Quran Aaron is a prophet did you catch it Aaron the brother of Moses his brother is a prophet in Islam guys did you catch it did you catch that Aaron is called a prophet in the Quran Aaron is a prophet in the Quran give me one if you caught it so Aaron the brother of Moses is also a prophet like Moses Do you see it? Now if we continue reading, Quran chapter 28, ayah 34, 35, it says, Moses said, and my brother Aaron is more fluent than me in tongue. Allah said to Moses, we will strengthen your arm through your brother Aaron. So we can conclude, guys, Aaron is the brother of Moses, right? Aaron is the brother of Moses. Oh. And he is also a prophet like Moses. So Aaron is a prophet. He is the brother of Moses, like Moses, a prophet. Right? That's the conclusion that we can make. And according to the Bible, in uh, Numbers, we also see that they are from the same mother. Right? We are According to the Holy Bible, Aaron and Moses, they are from the same father, same mother. Right? They are direct blood. To one another brother brother right but if we go to the Quran guys uh, sorry if we go to the hadith if we go to the hadith we can read the following Abu Huraira reported let me show you how you can spank Muhammad's lies Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger saying this is not Rob Christian talking this is the messenger of Islam the messenger of Allah Muhammad Muhammad saying I am most akin to the son of Mary among the whole of mankind and the prophets are of different mothers what this is Sahih Muslim guys hadith number 2365a this is not a weak da'if hadith no 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 brother this is not da'if hadith all the prophets are of different mothers we just learned that Aaron and Moses are both brothers and they are both prophets. They are brothers and they are prophets. But the hadith says that all the prophets share different mothers. Speaking from cave, Hira, Hira, according, according to the Muhammad, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, Islam. All the prophets are of different, different, different mothers, mothers, mothers. I mean, if this is not a huge bust, then I don't know the definition of spanking and bust. <clears throat> how can, how dare you to call yourself a prophet? How dare you to call yourself a man of God, but spank yourself contradict yourself like this echo echo the prophets prophets are of different mothers mothers but wait you just called allah and the quran liars muhammad since the quran claims that aaron and moses are brothers and they are both prophets you see it any muslim who can defend his spanked prophet today any muslim who thinks he can defend his prophet how can you save your prophet out of this mess how can you save your prophet out of this disaster muslims any muslim any any muslim speaking from kif hero hero do you have the courage and the knowledge to call me and defend your busted prophet? Uh-uh. Anyone? Guys, did you catch the disaster? Did you catch the contradiction? I hope you caught it. 
Are you going to throw Sahih Muslim under the bus? Are you going to throw Abu Huraira under the bus and say this is Da'if Hadith brother? I dare you to do that. I dare you to do that. And call Muhammad a liar because this is Muhammad speaking. You see it? Uh, Rory the Swagger Husky is asking, Rob Christian, when non-Muslim critic Islam, why do Muslims run to the Arabic? Because nine out of times when they debate, they don't debate Arabic speaking Christians like me. So they will say, hey, you don't know Arabic, the Arabic doesn't say that. This is false translation, brother. So they can use lies, to, you know, to get their prophet out of trouble. That's why. You don't know Arabic, brother. That's why. Hello, Carolina Ramfer. Welcome, uh, guys. Keep our beloved admins in your prayers. Keep us in your prayers. <clears throat> Welcome to the people who just joined in. Guys, did you catch the, the mess? Did you catch the disaster? Did you catch the bomb that Muhammad just dropped on the faces of Muslims? Do you see how Muhammad is playing with the minds of Muslims? Do you see how he fooled even his own first generation Muslims, the i.e. the Sahaba, the companions? He fooled them. He says in the Quran, you know, Aaron and Moses are brothers. They are also both prophets. Both Aaron, both Moses are prophets. But wait, in the hadith, Muhammad changed his mind and says, no, no, they are brothers, but, you know, all the prophets are not from the same mothers. They are from different mothers. Muhammad, are you playing a game with your own Sahaba? Huh? Wow! Wow, 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 what a huge bust for Muhammad. Do you see it? Now guys, another disaster is, if we go to Quran chapter 5, ayah 18, it says, and both the Jews and the Christians say, we, guys, pay attention, those are the Jews and the Christians, these are us and the Jews, we say, we are the children of Allah. First of all, we Christians don't believe in Allah. Christians don't say that. Another disaster is, let's say Allah is our God. He is not, but let's say. We are children of God and his loved ones. Say here, Allah is trying to refute the, the Christians and the Jews. Why then does Allah punish you for your sins? No. Guys, pay attention. Allah is saying, no, you are but human beings. So here, if you think here, the Quran, the writer of the Quran, Muhammad, always think that it's about, you know, sex, sexual intercourse, right? How can you call yourself a child of God, but God is punishing you for your sins? You're, you're just human beings. So here, actually, the writer of the Quran has no idea when we, Jews and Christians, call ourselves children of God, we are not associating ourselves with God. We are calling our God our Father. He's our Heavenly Father, right? God is our Father. He's our spiritually, spiritual Father, right? So Muhammad, the confused Muhammad, always think with a penis. Muhammad always thinks with his penis, brother. Right? Everything about Muhammad, it must be physical, it's carnal. Mo Muhammad, Muhammad. How dare you to call yourself a prophet, but you have no idea what the Jews and the Christians believe. This cannot be words of God. Muslims, if you care about your salvation, Muslims, the Muslims who are listening, Ya Muhammadans, if you are listening, how can this be the word of God that is in front of you. But this God does not know that when Christians and Jews say and call God their father, that it's not physical, it's spiritual. It's 
our spiritual father, not our physical through sex. No, it has nothing to do with sexual intercourse. But here, the writer of the Quran, we know it's Muhammad. There's nothing called Allah. It's Muhammad who's fabricating ayahs. He has no clue than when Jews and Christians call themselves children of God, that it's not through sexual intercourse, right? We are calling our God, our spiritual father. Everything about Muhammad is about his penis. He thinks with his penis day in, day out. This cannot be God, my friends. Come on. It's 2020, Muslims. Muhammadans, it's 2020. You cannot tell me that your Allah has no clue about what Jews and Christians believe. <clears throat> Don't tell me this is God. Any Muslim? So guys, if this is not spanking, then I don't know what spanking means. Let it sink in. My Skype ID is the Arab Christian, guys. If there's a Muslim who wants to call me, my Skype ID is the Arab Christian without separation. The Arab Christian. Call me, refute me, brother, silence me. Very, very bad spanking, Hafsa is saying. I mean, come on, man. You cannot tell me that Allah does not know when Jews and Christians say we are children of God, that we are not saying that because we are saying that because we are physical children of God. You are but human beings. I mean, the language is clear, right? You are but human. We know we are human beings. We know when we call children, our, we, we call ourselves children of God, we know that we are human beings. But we call God our father because he is our spiritual father. Right? It's not through sex as the Quran thinks it is. How can you be a Muslim and not see this disaster? Right? Spanking 101, guys. This is spanking 101. Now, <clears throat> guys, I want to share something with you, okay? Uh, yesterday, it was late. I was sitting in my bed. I did not sleep yet. I was sitting in my bed and I had my phone in my hand, right? I also, when I have time, I, you know, I try to support our other fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, our, our dear sister Hatun, who goes to Speaker's Corner, guys, Hatun, which, which I consider to be a lioness. I hope she's listening. Hatun, you are a lioness in my eyes, okay? Daniel and others who are go to speakers corner and debate Muslims face to face. You are true lions, right? So they go there and sh and Hatun she mentioned this topic to the Muslims, right? Guys, pay attention. Hatun she mentioned the following hadith. Narrated Aisha. This is by the way Sahih al Bukhari. Uh, Phil Herrera, can you give the link to the uh, to the audience on the chat? Sahih al Bukhari, Hadith number forty four, twenty eight. Sahih al Bukhari, Hadith number forty four, twenty eight. Pay attention to what Aisha is saying. Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, in his alignment, in which he died, used to say, "O oh, Aisha." I still feel the pain, Muhammad is saying, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel 
my aorta is being cut from the poison. Now, the Arabic does not say as if. Muslims love to tell you, why are you not going to the Arabic? Brother, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the two words as if in the Arabic. It doesn't say that. Right? It says, I saw. Right? I feel or I saw that my aorta is caught from the poison, al sem poison, right? You see it? If you know Arabic, it says the following Wajitu, right? In Qata'a Abhari min dalik al sem. I saw or let's say I feel that no as if this is false translation my orta is being cut from that poison where in Khaybar Muhammad conquered Khaybar guys this and this guy clearly Muhammad is not stupid guys clearly Muhammad is not stupid and here is why I mean guys 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 I am a Man of war, right? I'm a man of war. I'm a Muhammad. Picture yourself in his shoes. You are a leader of an army. You go and you conquer Khaybar, right? After you conquer Khaybar and you take the women as slaves, as sex slaves, you kill all the men. And then one of, one of the Jewish women, this is a Jewish town, right? Khaybar it was of the Jews. And one of the Jewish ladies, she she sells she she comes to you this is muhammad right she comes to you and she says hey muhammad i want to prepare food for you you just killed her father you just killed her uncles you just killed her brother brothers and you want to eat from her food she's going to prepare food for you are you going to eat that too? are you not thinking hey maybe this lady this jewish lady that i just killed her entire tribe Guys, think, 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 Muslims. Is this guy a true prophet or is he insane? Are you going to eat from a food, from a hands of a Jewish, that you just killed her complete tribe, her family? Don't you think that this lady can, is going to poison you? She's going to prepare food and she will poison you? Where is Allah when you need him? Was Allah silent, not sending Jibreel to tell him, don't eat from this food? So Muhammad starts to eat. And later he says to Aisha, I feel that my aorta is being cut from the point. Muhammad is a genius, brother. Muhammad was a genius. <laughs> you must be a genius. To eat from the hands of a Jewish lady that you a couple hours before killed her entire tribe. You destroyed her entire tribe. Why did God, Allah, I mean Allah, why did he not wake up from his sleep, send down Jibreel? Jibreel! is saying to Muhammad, Muhammad, don't, don't eat, don't eat, bro. Bro, 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 bro. Don't eat from that food, man. She put poison in it. And we know Muhammad became so ill, so ill. Even Aisha says, I never seen someone suffer from illness like Muhammad. Right? That's what she said. I think I can... Let me see if I can get you... <clears throat> Not sure if I can find it right now. But that's what Aisha said, right guys? Aisha said, I've never seen someone like... Muhammad 
having so much pain. He was so much pain that I shall, you know, she said, how can, I mean, guys, guys, put yourself in, in the shoes of Muhammad. He is a so-called prophet. He's the final prophet. He's the leader of all the prophets according to the Muslims. But Allah allows Muhammad to suffer from this poison. It doesn't say that, Rob Christian. <laughs> Why would you allow your best man, i.e. Muhammad, to suffer so immensely? Right? Maybe Aisha was lying. Can we throw Aisha under the bus, guys? Now, guys, today's Muslims, they go on the streets, right? They go on the streets and they say the following. Khaybar, khaybar, ya yahud, jayshu Muhammad, sawfa yaud. So when the Muslims, they, especially the Sunni Muslims, when they go on the streets, they scream, Khaybar, Khaybar, O Jews, the army of Muhammad will return. So they are reminding the Jews how they poisoned Muhammad in Khaybar, right? You see it? Till today they go like idiots on the streets and they scream like idiots. Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud, Jeshu Muhammad, Sofa Yahud. So they are reminding the Jews how they poisoned their prophet. Where was Allah when you needed? Yeah, Khaybar, Khaybar, O Jews, Ya Yahud, O Jews, Jeshu, o, the army of Muhammad, Sofa, will return, right? Khaybar, Khaybar, O Jews, the army of Muhammad will return. That's what they are screaming on the streets, right? Army of Muhammad. Why not the army of Allah, guys? Why the army of Muhammad? I mean, Muhammad died. He died like a rat from the poison. Why are you not saying the army of Allah? Clearly, you Muslims don't worship Muhammad, right? That's why, right? You Muslims don't worship Muhammad, right? <laughs> the army of Muhammad. But brother, Muhammad is already dead and rotten in his grave, brother. Yeah, and you may, maybe you have noticed we always play in our intro video, you know, the small video that I always play before my I start my live show. You see this Muslim Sunni kid? He says, all the Jews, you know, they will hide behind the stones and the trees. And even the stones and the trees will scream, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Else the judgment day or the last hour will not be established, right? Can you imagine all the Jews must go, guys? The Muslims, they hate the Jews so much. All the Jews must go before judgment day happens. Yeah, the Gharqa tree, exactly. The stones will speak. The trees, the, which, which are the Jewish trees. Imagine Jewish trees, guys. The Jewish Gharqa tree will speak and say, there's a Jew. Uh, uh, sorry, the, the Gharqa, only the Gharqa tree will not speak because it's a Jewish tree. Jewish trees, guys, will defend the Jews. <laughs> only those trees, because those are Jewish trees, they will not speak. Lord have mercy. Even the stones will speak. There's a Jew behind me. Come and kill him, brother. Else the last hour, judgment day will not. So, guys, let's say Hitler. Guys, let's say Hitler destroyed 6 million Jews. Muslims must just annihilate all the Jews. Who is worse? Hitler or the Muslims? You know, Islam means peace, brother. Islam is peace. Yeah, right. All the Jews must go. Else Allah will not establish the last hour. Clearly, this is a peaceful, loving code that you call Muslim, Islam, right? Muslims. All the Jews must go. Yeah. yeah see the love, the peace of Islam. Pieces. Yeah, right. Now, guys, we spoke about the artery, right? This is the, uh, the, the aorta, right? That you see here. The aorta. Do you see it, guys? Is the screen clear, guys? Give me one if the screen is clear. 
This is the aorta. So basically, you, the most important vein, blood vein, you know, that comes, the blood comes from your heart and goes to your body. Do you see it? Imagine if it, this gets caught with a knife, or let's say, or with poison, or, let's say. As Muhammad said, my aorta, I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison. Right? Imagine what will happen. You will die instantly. You cannot fix this. You will die in a couple, maybe, maybe one minute. I, I have no, I'm not a doctor. I'm not Zekar Naik. I'm not a medical doctor, Zaik. Brother Fifta. Right? Guys, I can't do the voice of uh, Zekar Naik. Sorry. You have to go to Christian Prince for that. But imagine if your aorta is being severed, cut from the poison. You will die, right? You will die. Now let's see what the Quran has to say about that. Let us see, brother, who actually killed Muhammad. Did, Muh did the Jews kill Muhammad? Or was that by the decree of Allah? Did Allah do that? Or did the Jews do that? I challenge you to call me and say, Rob Christian, you're a liar. I challenge you to call me and say, Rob Christian, you're, you're a liar. Now guys, if we go to chapter 69, Ayah 44 to 46. Let me read it for you. وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَدْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينِ What did I just read, guys? Let me go to the translation. Let us start with Ayah 44. Guys, pay attention. Take notes. Take your pens out. Take your papers out and... Or take a screenshot, do, whatever, do what you have to do. Because I'm going to show you that it's Allah who killed Muhammad. Allah is the one who killed Muhammad. Who? Allah killed Muhammad. Watch. Chapter 69, ayah 44 to 46. And if he, Muhammad, had fabricated things against us, some of the saying against us, so if you... Let's say Muhammad, you are a prophet and you're going to fabricate things against Allah, lie about Allah. What will happen? We, Allah is saying, would certainly have seized him by the right hand. Continuing, Ayah 46. Then we should, then we would certainly, what does Allah say? Then we would certainly have cut off his aorta. Wait, wait, wait. Where did we hear this, guys? Where did we hear this before? What did Muhammad say? I feel my aorta is being cut from the poison. What did Allah say? Then we would certainly have cut off his aorta. Uh -huh. Who cut the aorta of Muhammad? Allah. Because Muhammad fabricated lies against Allah. So Allah decided to cut off his aorta. Bam! Take notes. Allah took the knife and he cut off the aorta. Enough is enough, Muhammad. I wonder, I wonder why Aisha used to say, ما أرى ربك إلا يسارع فيها واك يا محمد. عائشة used to say translation, I see that your Lord hastens to fulfill your desires. Huh? 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 I I see. Every time Muhammad busts himself, Allah starts to run like harder than Usain Bolt, right? Who got a medal, a golden medal in the Olympics. Allah starts to run even outrun Usain Bolt, right? The champion, right? The record holder. Allah can run faster than Forrest Gump himself. And he starts to help Muhammad out. But even Allah got tired from Muhammad. And he decided to cut off the aorta of Muhammad. Take notes, guys. Allah is running harder than Usain Bolt himself. Unbelievable! 
Yeah, and guys, Blackstone says the following. Aisha killed them for rape at the age of nine. Blackstone, that's what the Shia say. Shia guys, Shia Muslims. They curse Aisha left and right every morning and evening. They curse her out. They curse Hafza, the other wife of Muhammad. And they say that it was Abu Bakr's plan to get rid of Muhammad by commanding his two wives, the daughter of Abu Bakr, Aisha, and the other wife of Muhammad, Hafsa and Aisha, when Muhammad was sick, they, instead of giving him medicine, right, they gave him poison. They poisoned him. So the two wives of Muhammad put poison in his mouth, according to the Shia. This is why Shia curse Abu Bakr. This is why Shia curse Aisha. This is why Shia curse Hafsa, especially Aisha. Right? Especially Aisha. So Muslims, who killed Allah? Did the Jews kill, uh, sorry, who killed Muhammad? Did the Jews kill Muhammad? Did Allah kill Muhammad? Or according to the Shia, Hafsa and Aisha? Huh? <laughs> Hafsa for Christ, you are funny. Shia, don't curse me. Yeah. Any Muslim? Uh, Zeb saying, guys, is Rob Christian a Muslim? Really, bro? My name is Rob Christian, and you are asking me if I'm a Muslim? Yeah, I, you know, I know a guy who said, if I want to disrespect myself, I'm going to become a Muslim. If I don't respect my own soul, I'm, I'm going to become a Muslim. My name is Rob Christian, and you're asking me if I'm a Muslim? <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm a Muhammadan brother. I'm, I, you know, I'm a worshiper of Muhammad like you. <clears throat> God forbid. <clears throat> God forbid. It's an insult to our holy living God to be a Muslim. It's an insult to be a follower of Muhammad in the eyes of God. God forbid. God forbid. So pick and choose Muslim. Did Allah cut the aorta of Muhammad? Did the Jewish lady kill Muhammad or according to the Shia, Hafsa and Aisha by giving him poison instead of medicine? You tell me Muslim, pick and choose. Muslims don't even agree on how Muhammad died. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? They can't even agree who killed Muhammad. Sunnis say the, 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 the Jewish Killed Muhammad. This is why they scream, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud. Jeshu Muhammad survived. They are reminding the Jews how they poisoned their prophet. Those are the Sunnis. In the Quran, we see that Muhammad is being killed by Allah because Allah made his aorta to be cut off. Right? Muhammad said it. I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison. So according to the Quran, it's Allah. But the Shia say it's Hafza and Aisha. Pick and choose, brother. Pick and choose. Are you going to vote for A or B or C? Yeah, there should be a movie, a Netflix movie. Who killed Muhammad? Right. I would love to watch that movie. Who killed Muhammad? A, the Jews. B, Allah. Or C, as the Shia claim, Hafza or Aisha. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy, Sarah, that you are liking this topic. If you like, guys, if you like this topic, please, for the love of God, if you love the truth, if you are like me, you love the truth, you need to download this video. And after we are done, you let's say 30 minutes, one hour, share it all over social media, guys. Don't be, don't be lazy, Christians. Don't be lazy, guys. Right? Use social media. Social media is the biggest weapon against Muhammad and Islam. Use our videos. Maybe you like small part of this video that you want to check. Download the video, cut it, take that part that you like. I mean, it's very easy. You don't need to be a genius to download a video and cut it, the part that you like and upload it. 
Do what you have to do. Guys, I'm not asking you, guys, I'm not asking you to teach like me. I'm not asking you to debate life on air like me. But at least, if you want to help just one Muslim, just one Muslim, guys, that is going to be a huge celebration in heaven, according to the Holy Bible. If you can save just one Muslim out of this cult, and so he can accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, that is going to be a huge, huge celebration. So Christians, instead of playing games, instead of watching cooking videos, movies, do what you have to do. Don't do it for me, guys. Don't do it for me. Now, guys, I want to... Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we, we showed you who have killed Muhammad. Let us continue. About the beating of women in Islam, guys. About the beating of women in Islam. You see here this lovely husband beating the, the hell out of his wives. I think this is this, this looks like uh, Taliban area, maybe Pakistan or Afghanistan. I think Afghanistan. Look how he is holding a stick and he's beating them like he's beating a cow or something or a camel or whatever. I mean, these are human beings, man. How dare you? How dare you to strike a woman? You call yourself a man? Guys, if we, uh, here in the West, right, let's say in America, if you start to be the dog on the streets, they will capture you and they will throw you in jail, man. This guy that you see here, he was beating a dog on the streets and he beat the dog to death and look what they did to him. They captured him and they put him in jail. They, gave, they punished him. So what about beating women, man? What about beating women, Muslims? How dare you? If you beat a dog, they will throw you in jail. What about beating a woman? You call, your, uh, you call, you, you call yourself a man and you call this a religion of God? You call this a religion of God? Allah in the Quran allowing you to beat women? Is, is this God? Is this a religion, guys? We don't, we, we don't even beat dogs anymore. We will be put in jail for that. What about beating your wife, your daughters? I think, guys, today, you know, the topic is so damaging. No Muslim dares to call us. Right? And the one who called me, you heard him. He called Allah a man. He said, this, this cannot be a man talking. Well... I agree with you because we actually believe we have proof enough that Muhammad is the one who is fabricating eyes in the Quran. Yes, those are the words of man. The Quran is the word of Muhammad. If you go to the Quran, you'll see that this is the, these are the words of Muhammad. Right? So it's really messed up to hit a woman, guys. How dare you? If there's any brave Muslim, as Phil Herrera is saying, Call us live on air. We are live, brother. Now you have the time. Now you have the chance to call us. Any Muslim? Yeah. Guys, Muslims, they love to tell you, Muhammad, he was so very respectful towards his wives. Guys, let us see what Sahih Muslim is saying about this. Hadith number 21, 27. Guys, pay attention, okay? I hope you're with me. Forget about the Abduls who are cowards in the live chat. Forget about them. Pay attention to what I have to tell you. And I ask you to read with me. All right? Take notes and see how Muhammad actually beat women. And in this case, Aisha. He beat and hit Aisha. Watch. He, the prophet, hastens his steps, and I also hastens my steps. So the, basically, I didn't copy the whole uh, hadith because it's very long hadith. The story goes like this. Muhammad goes outside, right? Muhammad goes outside. It's in the night. It's dark and it's night, right? And Aisha, she heard, she heard him and she started to follow him, right? So Muhammad goes outside in the night 
and Aisha starts to follow him and she wanted to know where her husband is going, right, right guys? So Aisha starts to follow him. Then Muhammad turns here and he's hearing his steps and he heard someone is following him. So he went back. Instead of keep uh, going through his roads, he came back. So he, Muhammad, hastens his steps. When Aisha heard that Muhammad turned back, she also turns back. So she, you can't find out that she's following him, right? So she's spying on her husband. Aisha is spying on Muhammad. And Muhammad, when he noticed, he went back to his house. And Aisha starts to run too. So he starts to run and she starts to run. So Muhammad hastens his steps and I also hasten my steps, says Aisha. He ran and I too ran. Guys, watch this comedy show. Muhammad starts to run and Aisha starts to run. He came to the house. Muhammad came to the house and I also came to the house, says Aisha. I, however, preceded him. So Aisha, because she was following him, she was the one who to come to the house first, right? So she came first to the house and I entered the house and as I lay down in the bed, so she hastens, she ran in, in her bed. So he cannot find out that she, it was her who, who was spying on him, right? So she maybe took her clothes off and she went in, in bed. He, Muhammad, the holy prophet, there's nothing called holy anyway. There's nothing called holy in Islam. But anyway, forget about it, guys. He, Muhammad, entered the house. Now watch. And said, so Muhammad entered the house after Aisha. And he said, why is it, O oh Aisha, is that you who is out of breath? So why are you breathing so heavenly, Aisha, Muhammad is saying. I said, so now Aisha is lying to her husband. Aisha is lying to Muhammad. Aisha said, I said, Aisha is saying, there is nothing, O Prophet of Allah. O Prophet of Allah. There is nothing. I, it wasn't me. Right? He said, tell me. Muhammad said, tell me, woman. You woman, tell me. Or the subtle and the aware would inform me. So if you are not going to tell me it's you, it was you, the subtle and the aware would inform me. You better tell me, was it you? Then Aisha came clean. Aisha came clean. And she said, I said, Messenger of Allah, my, may my father, Abu Bakr, and mother be ransomed for you. And then I told him the whole story. So she came clean and she told him, yes, it was me who was spying on you, who was following you in that darkness. He said, Muhammad, now look, guys, the response of Muhammad. He said, was it the darkness of your shadow that I saw in front of me? Was it you who was following me? She said, yes. And look what Muhammad is doing. He made a box, right? Imagine, you know, when you're, let's say, make your hand as in a fist, right? A fist. And he struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. But brother, according to the Muslim, Muhammad never beat any woman. Aisha saying, and he struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. What did you Muslims say? Muhammad never beat any woman. What do you think Aisha would have said? Hit me baby all the time. Oh baby, baby. Na 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 na. Hit me, baby, all the time. <clears throat> yeah, my beautiful voice, man. My voice is gone, but I have a really good voice. Make sure to, you know, cover all the mirrors because, you know, you never know when I sing. <clears throat> Hit me all the time, I shall say. Look at those pretty eyes, man. You Muslims dare to say Muhammad never lift a finger on any of his wives? Brother, this is weak, da'if hadith, brother. No, but brother, this is sahih, Muslim. Sahih, sahih, sahih. Brother? Yeah, uh, by the way, uh, Borneo apostate, I can show you a video clip from a sheikh, a Sunni al-Azhari sheikh, who says, 
Never say or use the word holy in Islam. There's nothing called holy Quran. There's nothing called holy prophet. I've played that video many times. Okay, you can go look for it too. It's uh, in between many of my videos. I used it many times. Hit me, baby, all the time. Maybe Aisha was singing. Maybe Aisha liked it. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe she's in that, you know, in that kind of stuff. Who knows? You never know, right? Prophet, why are you so so peaceful and loving towards your women, man? You are. You claim to be a man of God, <clears throat> guys, guys. We showed you today, and actually today's live show proves that Muslims don't think. They are a victim. They are a victim of this cult. They don't think. The moment they start to think, they will leave Islam. So help me to help you. Help me to help you. Share our videos, guys. Make sure to download our videos. Help those victims. And to the Muslims, it's your choice, guys. It's your choice. Are you going to leave Islam after today's live show? It's it's on you. I'm only a messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. I can only show you what the scriptures say. All right? You are truly victims. You are the victims of this self-proclaimed prophet. You are the victims of this self-proclaimed man who claimed to be the last of all the prophets. He created Islam and you are the victims of this cult called Islam. Rena, and peace be upon you, sister. May the peace of Christ be upon all of you. So Muslims, are you going to decide to leave Islam and come back home to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? It's on you. Either you're going to stay in this cult of yours. Or leave Islam. If there's a really, really sincere Muslim lady, you really need to think. If your prophet was beating his wives, in this case Aisha, now you'll understand why your men are allowed to beat you. Are you a dog to be beaten? Even dogs, as we mentioned earlier, guys, even dog don't get beaten anymore in 2020. What about you? This is a cult that was created by Muhammad 1400 years ago. Why do you accept to be beaten by your husbands and fathers? Women, I'm talking to you. How dare you? To follow such a man and his cult. Don't you respect yourselves? Would you allow your husbands to beat you in 2020? Why would you follow a so-called religion that allows men to beat you? To beat the hell out of you? Beat them with a the miswak, brother. Yeah, I'm still here. I'll, I'll appraise. God is good. We're still healthy. We're still doing this, guys. How long are we live on, guys? Two hours and 45 minutes. Wow, time flies. <sighs> guys, help help those Muslims out of this cult. Help me to help you. And by this, guys, we finished, basically, our teaching. Are there any Muslims? Are there any Christians who wants to call us live? Now, if you are a Christian, you are allowed to call us live. Don't say, Rob Christian, you don't allow Christians to call. Uh, you know, last time on my last live show, I got two messages from Christians. They said, why are you not allowing us to call? My friend, I allow you to call. But don't call me when, when we are done, when I stop my live show. Let me pick up this call. Yeah, hello? Hello, Rob. How you doing? Hey, my friend, how are you? Welcome. I'm good. I'm doing good. Excellent, excellent um, show today, man. I really enjoyed it. It's raining outside. I'm just sitting back listening. And but bro, bro, wait, wait. Muslims say RC. It, it doesn't say that RC. 
What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, they, they crazy, and um, they yeah. was even leaving comments about um, the last video that you posted trying to um yeah. deny. You, that. you like that? Eh? You like that one? Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really liked it. They was trying to deny that. Um, they was trying to deny that. Um, yeah. that it was talking about literal mothers, which was uh, which was very funny because. It doesn't get any clearer as what the Hadith said, man. Mm -hmm. Muhammad said. Exactly. When he said that um, all of the prophets have different mothers. So. Yeah. But, but what I wanted to share was... Um, okay. This one. Um, It's on the screen, my the, friend. Yeah. Yeah. The Hadith grading system, right? Yeah. You know, they go by a chain of narrators, correct? Correct. So if one of the chain of narrators is... Daif. Broken, yeah, or daif, yeah. It makes the um chain the hot yeah broken. Basically, you know, like it's like a chain, right? That's how Muslims they call us size of hadith, brother. If just one small fracture of this chain is no no, it's broken, then the chain is not strong enough, right? So and this is why they call it Sahih, right? Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari. You cannot say this is daif. This is Sahih. This, this cannot, it cannot be more authentic than this, right? Right. This is the strongest. So my, uh. so my question is, the Quran itself is basically a Hadith, correct? Yes. Since yes. It is uh, they, Muslims say it's the Hadith of Allah. It's the speech of Allah, right? Hadith means speech, right? So it's the speech of Allah. The Quran itself is Hadith. Exactly. Okay, now then, then this is the thing that's very damaging. Okay, Muhammad, when he was in the cave of Hira, yes. Okay, since a broken chain means that a hadith is weak, that means the Quran itself, from the very start, is a weak hadith because. The person or whatever gave Muhammad yes. the mess, it did not introduce itself to him. So therefore, based upon like the Isna, the chain of narration, yes. it began with an unknown narrator. Mm -hmm. So looking at it from that perspective, you can say the entire Quran is weak because the first person to recite it is unknown. So that they can throw the whole Quran away if they're going to try to say yes, uh, exactly. Hadith is Daif or something. Then the very Quran it begins as Daif because mm -hmm. um, I just want to be correct. Nothing introduced itself to Muhammad, correct? Yeah, the thing is, uh, Muslims don't have the Quran of Muhammad anymore. I, I challenge any Muslim. Yeah. I'll give you a thousand dollar if you can show me the original Quran of Muhammad, because the story goes like this. The Quran that Muhammad was giving to the Muslims, guys, pay attention. The Quran that Muhammad was giving to the Muslims, they used to write it on animal skin, right? They used to write it on bones. They used to write it on stones, not on paper, right? Animal skin, bones. Where, where are those items? Can you show me those so-called manuscripts? Those are so-called manuscripts on stones, animal skin, Uh, 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 bones, wood, right? Uh, material stuff, right? Where, where, where are those things? Did they survive? No. What did ha What did Abu Bakr do? He ordered the Quran to be written down. Then that Quran, that one copy, he gave it to Hafza, and Hafza, the wife of Muhammad, guys, the same wife that, according to Shia, poisoned Muhammad together with Aisha. That Hafza, she put it under her bed, right? That's how it begins. So in a book form, it was put under the bed of Aisha, uh, sorry, Hafza. Then when Uthman became the next caliph, right? Uthman became the caliph. He ordered Zayd ibn Thabit to collect everything that is written on bones, on stones, on wood, on animal skin, and any anything. What did Zayd ibn Thabit, you are asking me to do? To do something that my prophet did not order me to do. That's what you're, you're, you're basically asking me to lift mountains. It's much easier to lift mountains, according to Zayd ibn Thabit, who was given the command to collect the Quran. Are you, are you giving me this huge command? 
It's much easier. Guys, look what this guy is saying. It's much easier to lift mountains than collect the Quran and write it down, right? So That's correct. So he then, you know, what does they do? He goes to Hafza. He takes her, that Quran that was sitting on her bed, under her bed, and he went to the Sahaba. Where's the change? We don't know that. Where's the change? It's gone. There's nothing called change. So you're correct, my friend. We don't have this, yeah. not, no chain. Then, you know, Zaid starts to write, right? Everything he hears starts to write. Rewrite it in the Qureshi dialect and makes nine copies. Where are the nine copies? Show me just one copy that was written by Zaid. Where is it? I can't find it. Is it in Turkey? Yeah. No. Where is and it? RC, here's something else I, I would like to share. Like yeah. a, a lot of people overlook this fact right here because when Muhammad was in the cave of Hira, or however you pronounce it. Yeah, Hira, yeah. Hira, when he was praying in the cave, he was praying to Allah. Yeah. But this this was pre-Islam. Exactly. So the Muslims, the Muslims have to ask this question, this question, who was Muhammad praying to? Because this was before he received the Quran, and the only version of Allah that he knew at yeah. the time was the pagan version of Allah who had three daughters and was the chief god of the 365 idols of the Kaaba. Yeah. My friend, so just, just a second, because this is really important. Guys, this is really important what our brother here is saying. I want to put the hadith. Yeah. I'll start from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, let me put the hadith on the screen. Okay. I can't see the screen. Um, yeah. Because you really mentioned very important thing. Guys, pay attention to what this gentleman is saying, right? This this really smart gentleman who, 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 you know, I love it when you call me, my friend, because you're bringing, giving me ideas so we can have a nice, you know, discussion to right. rip Muhammad another hole, all right? Right. He has, he needs more holes in his body. I can't see the screen. I'm just, I I'm know. just letting you. Let me, let me read the part that you, that you said, uh, you know? <laughs> Uh, let's see. I hope I got the right. No, this is not the right hadith. Just a second, guys. I want to find you the. <clears throat> mm -hmm. and, and to the audience, make sure y'all make clips of these videos and like just post the best parts and put titles on it because we really need to proliferate the entire YouTube yeah. airway with these type of videos, yeah. you know. No, this is the correct hadith. Look, let me read the part what you uh, mentioned, guys. So, when Muhammad used to go to Cave Hira, right, when he used to go to Cave Hira, what did he do? And you said it already. What does the hadith say? When he went to Cave Hira, where he used to worship Allah. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, here is a huge disaster. And the gentleman just mentioned it. Can you repeat what you mentioned, my friend, about Cave Hira? All right. All right. What I was saying was when Muhammad was going to worship Allah in the cave, this was before the time of the official Islam that we exactly. have with the Quran and everything. Exactly. And Muhammad even said that his own father went to hell. Yes. So the only, the only Allah that Muhammad knew yeah. was the same Allah that the rest of the pagans knew. Exactly. Who was the, who yeah, was guys, the guys, pay attention. Sorry for, uh, you know, uh, breaking what you said. Just I want to add yeah. something to it. It's more clear for our audience, you know. According to Islam, the name of Muhammad's father is Abdullah. What does Abdullah mean? It's the slave of Allah. So, and if we dig deep and we do some research, we see that Muhammad's father and Muhammad's mother are both in hellfire, right? Because Muhammad said, your father and my father, said Muhammad, are in hellfire. So how is it possible that the name of the father of Muhammad is the slave of Allah, Abdullah, while he's worshipping Allah, how can he be in hellfire? Because that was a different Allah. So here, before getting divine revelation, Muhammad used to go to cave Hira, where he used to worship Allah. This is pre-Islam. This is before Jibreel came to him. Continue, my friend. All right. So, so as RC just said, he was in a cave worshiping Allah, and this was pre-Islam. And the only Allah he knew 
was the same one that his father knew, which was the Allah who had three daughters, Al Uzza, Al Alat, and Manat, exactly. and who was the chief god of the uh, 365 idols of the Kaaba. Exactly. So you got to ask if if Muhammad's father was sent to hell, and this was pre-Islam, and he was still titled the slave of Allah, but Muhammad was in the cave praying to Allah at the same time before Islam, that means he was praying to a pagan god because he was praying to this Allah. And this was before Islam when he had went and destroyed the idols in the Kaaba. So while he was in the cave praying to Allah, the idols, the 365 idols were still in the Kaaba and everybody else in his community was still worshiping Allah. Exactly. So he knew nothing. He knew nothing about monotheism. He knew nothing about any of that because he exactly. hadn't the Quran yet. He had yeah. no Quran yet. Exactly. So, so he was dude, he was worshiping Allah as the supreme moon idol, like the pagans, and the, like pagans, the pagans. Yeah, the pagans worship Allah as the supreme, so the the most high God, right? And this yeah. same God, this same moon idol, the moon idol Allah, that was his name actually before Islam, and this same idol had. Three daughters, Allah, Al Uzza, Wal Manat. These three bird idols, they used to be crane idols, right? They were <laughs> birds, they could fly. Now, why could they fly? Because the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, right? The tribe of Muhammad himself, the family and the tribe of Muhammad himself used to worship Allah, Al Uzza, Wal Manat because these birds used to carry the prayers of the pagans they could fly and deliver like uh, let's say a uh, uh, pigeon right <laughs> a male pigeon who delivers mail so they were actually interceding between the pagan of Quraysh and Allah so they flew all the way to the moon idol Allah and deliver him the prayers of the pagans and if we continue reading it's until one day he, Muhammad, received guidance while he was in the cave of Hira. An angel came to him and asked him to read. So, all of that, to which kind of God was Muhammad worshipping, as the gentleman man said, right? He was worshipping the moon idol Allah. Do you see it, guys? This is Sahih Bukhari. So, Muhammad was already worshipping Allah, who was a moon idol, a pagan moon idol. Continue, my friends. And in addition to that, Here's something else like this proves everything that I'm saying, what you agree to. This proves that the Quran is a false deception yeah. because how can you receive a true revelation when you are praying to a pagan deity? Exactly. So this proves the, that the demon that visited Muhammad was not the angel Jibril because, again, how can you receive a true revelation? When you are praying to a pagan deity, exactly, it would be like me, it would be like me saying that I'm a prophet to the people who worship Buddha, and one day I'm in a cave praying to a Buddha statue, and all of a sudden the Buddha statue stands up and say, "Don't Iqra, worship me." Iqra, Iqra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the Buddha statue just starts talking and saying. I am the real Buddha. I am one, no other God. It's like, how can you, it's like you praying to the devil, getting a true revelation from the devil. It don't make sense. And then they using the same name as the same God that the pagans worship. How are you going to keep the same Allah name for the the true God? It don't even make sense. Yeah, like, yeah, how There is a gentleman, my friend, just, just a second. There is a gentleman in the live chat by the name of road ffm he says and i quote god will never give you revelation when you're praying to a false moon idol the pre is existing allah before islam exactly that's what we are trying to tell you right road mm -hmm. fm you are very correct my friend how how is the true god <coughs> let's say allah we don't believe allah is true god but how is the true god giving you divine revelation when you are praying in a cave to a, to, to a false idol that doesn't make sense to a false idol. Yeah. that's common sense that's common sense that the visitation was demonic because in his mind the only concept he had of allah 
is the pagan deity concept. So how can how can he receive any his basically his mind was opened up to demonic visitation. He was in a perfect situation to be tricked and deceived. Yeah, exactly. And My friend, can I add can I add something to what you just said? Yeah, yes. Yeah, and you know, if we continue reading, it says the prophet added, then this so-called angel held me forcefully, right? And pressed me so hard that I felt the shred. Then he released me and again asked me, read, Iqra, Iqra. You know, picture this, you're in, in a cave, right? So you will always hear it like, Iqra. And then he starts to squeeze him again, Iqra, right? So three times, Iqra, Iqra. But wait, did this so-called angel, like all the true angels that we find in the Holy Bible, did he say, Salamu alaikum, Muhammad? Did he actually greet Muhammad before he starts to command him to, to read? And squeeze him? No. So how? Right, because every angel yeah. must say, "I come in peace, salam, peace, salam alayka, peace be upon you." Where's the peace on Muhammad? Nowhere. So, so Rob, listen, you should post the hadith because they say that angels are Muslims. So how can this angel also come and not give the universal Islamic greeting of peace? Could you? Can you? Is there a hadith that say that Muslims must greet, greet each other saying assalamu alaikum? Yeah. Why didn't they do that? And yeah. it also proves that Islam started out as a violent religion because if that angel is squeezing him, causing him to have fear and stress, that's what violence is. Violence is the force, is any force, anytime you implement force directed to somebody yeah. that causes them uneasiness. This cannot, be, this cannot be an angel, right? This cannot be an angel. Yeah. 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 So how can that be a godly angel and it's causing you stress yeah. and fear? Yeah. What can you remind me, my time. friend, for the, our audience too? You know, for the truth's sake, can you remind me when the when the angel came to visit the mother of our Lord? What did he say to her according to the Bible? He said, okay. "Peace be unto you." And what what Every else? Time you, peace up he said, unto peace. you. Don't fear, right? Don't yeah. fear. Where is where are those words? Where are those words to Muhammad? Don't fear, don't fear. Salam, peace be upon you, right? Right. Where, and, where's the peace? He, where's the don't don't fear? I'm an angel. Don't should should an angel, you know, to to put this so-called angel to the test? Should we not see did this angel say salam alaika? Or right. don't fear, like all the angels say, don't fear. I come in peace. Hey, I'm, All right. I'm going to hang up, but can you go into why in Islam these angels, this is another good point. Why would an angel in Islam have a Hebrew name with L at the <laughs> ending? Can yeah. you go into that in depth? Yeah. Like, what, how is it that these angels have Hebrew names? Yes. Like, it's so blatantly apparent that yeah. This is a copycat. This is copy, copy Play paste. Yeah, copy paste from the Jews and the Christians. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm gonna hang up and thank you for you calling. Sure, sure. All right. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, my uh -huh. friend. God bless. God bless. Yeah, that what you know. You Christians are are too too dangerous for this, man. You Christians are learning fast, man. You Christians of 2020 are dangerous to this call, man. Thank you for this call, my friend. God bless you. You know, I'm really happy that slowly, slowly, slowly Christians are using polemics more and more to destroy this man-made God. Thank you, Lord, that we are not ignorant about this cult anymore, right? Guys, someone was asking about Waraka. Who was the one who was asking about Waraka? Sorry if I missed. Um, let me scroll back. Guys, I can't read all the messages in the live chat, okay? But someone was mentioned or asked, is this Waraka? Who, 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 used the, who, who mentioned Waraka, guys? Oh, Blackstone, it was you, right? Okay, Blackstone. About Waraka, so the story goes like this. Khadija, right, takes, Khadija takes Muhammad to her cousin Waraka, right? After this incident, Khadija takes her husband, to, <clears throat> to 
to her cousin uh, Waraka. Now Waraka, guys, here is the is the part. Khadija, read with me, guys. Khadija then took him, who Muhammad, to Waraka bin Nufil. This is the cousin of Khadija. She, he is the cousin of the first wife of Muhammad, Khadija. Right? Waraka had been converted to Christianity. Can you show me the word Christianity in the Arabic? Muslims, I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the word Christianity in the Arabic. Anyway, let it go, Rob Christian, let it go. Anyway, so he converted to Christianity in the pre Islamic period. So he was, according to this uh, hadith, he was a <clears throat> an idol worshiper like Muhammad, right? And he became a Christian, which is, you know, it doesn't say that. Let it go, Rob Christian, let it go. If we continue reading, it says, and Waraka, <clears throat> guys, are you paying attention? And Waraka used to write Arabic and write the Injil, the gospel, in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to write. Wait, wait, wait. Muslims, you truly don't think when you read the hadith. Question. Question. According to this hadith, Right, Waraka is translating the Injil. We know the Injil was in Greek. We know that the Injil was translated from the Greek to Aramaic. Let's say Waraka was sp an, an Aramaic speaker like me. Guys, I'm, I'm an Assyrian. I know Aramaic, okay? Abun Bashmaya, Nishqadash Mokh, Tithim al I I know Aramaic, guys. I, I, I can recite. The Lord's Prayer, Our Father in Heaven, in Aramaic, right? Okay, so let's say, uh, <clears throat> my voice is gone, guys. Let's say Waraka was translating the Injil, the Gospel, from Greek or Aramaic, let's say Aramaic, to Arabic. And if we continue reading, it says, As much as Allah, who? As much as Allah wished him to write. Wait. Didn't Muhammad say. Guys. Didn't Muhammad say. Let me go back. Where is the hadith? Just a second. Didn't Muhammad say. There was no prophet. Guys read. This is Sahih Muslim. And you can also see it in Sahih Bukhari. There is no. Right? There is no prophet between me and Jesus. What? What did you say, Muhammad? There is no prophet between me and Jesus. Did you catch it, guys? Guys, there is no prophet was raised between me and him. Who? Jesus. But what does the hadith say? I mean, you can read it yourself. Come on. According to this hadith, this is Sahih, Sahih, Bukhari, Bukhari, Bukhari. Here, clearly, Waraka is getting divine revelation from Allah. What did Muhammad say? There is no prophet between me and Jesus. Clearly, Waraka was a prophet too, because he was getting divine revelation from Allah and he was writing. Do you see it? Here, Muhammad made huge poo-poo. Muhammad made huge poo-poo, as Christian Prince would have said. What a big disaster, guys. Now suddenly, Waraka is a prophet too, because if you are getting divine revelation from Allah, and you are writing what Allah wants you to do, that means you are a prophet. Take notes, guys. Let me give you the link. Take a screenshot, do what you have to do, bookmark it, save it, use it in your debates. Did you see it? So if Waraka is getting divine revelation and he's writing it down from Allah, that means Waraka is a prophet too. And Muhammad spanked himself. He said, there is no prophet between me and Jesus. But Waraka is getting divine revelation from Allah. Bam on your forehead, Muhammad. Bam! Again, 
How many times did we spank Muhammad today, guys? You tell me. I lost count. I really lost count. I, I can't remember. I lost count, guys. This is why I always say, guys, when Muslims start to think they are going to leave this cult. But Muslims don't read. They don't understand. They are... I, you know, I never seen such illiterate people like, like the Muslims. They don't read. These people don't read. And the proof is in front. They, they don't read their own sources. They go to the mosque, listen, listen to the Imam, listen. Brother, this is Ustaz talking. This is Imam. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, Habibi. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Bro, why are you not doing your own research? If you Muslims start to read, and think you're going to leave this uh, this 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 damning man-made cult, man. This is a religion, or this is uh, what is what is this, man? No, um, no, no, my friend. Uh, who's asking? GC Rob. Is saying GC is saying Rob, why did Waraka call Muhammad his nephew? No, this is Khadija talking. Khadija said, Oh my god, so Khadija is talking to Waraka, right? Right, <clears throat> and why? Oh, okay, that now I understand. Listen to what your nephew is going to say. Well, in Arabic customs, guys, I as an Arab, I can confirm. Let's say uh, my wife. I'm a married guy, guys. Okay? Let me teach you a little bit uh, about Arabic tradition. I, as an Arab, my wife, right? My wife, her brother, right? Her brother can be called my, my cousin, you know, let's say. Why? Or nephew. You know why? Because my father-in-law we call our fathers-in-law in arabic tradition in culture we call them my uncle so when i address my father-in-law i say to him ammi right my uncle ammi i don't call my uh, uncle by name to be honest, out of respect because he's older than me he's the father of my wife i address him as my uncle that's why so it's yeah it's tradition yeah out of respect. This is so she is saying to her cousin, Waraka, listen to what your nephew is going to say. Right? Then, guys, here's another $1 million challenge. Watch. So, after Waraka hearing what happened to Muhammad in that cave, he says, Oh, my nephew, oh, Muhammad. Guys, take notes. This is really damaging stuff. Oh, my nephew. What have you seen? The Prophet then described whatever he had seen. Waraka then answers. Now here is the Taqiyya 101 guys in the translation. Taqiyya 101. Why Rob Christian? Well here is why. Waraka said this is the same angel Gabriel who was sent to Moses. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Wait, wait. I just found two disasters, guys. I just found two disasters. Disaster number one. I'll give you a thousand dollar as a Muslim. I'll give you a thousand dollar as a Muslim if you can show me the word angel in the Arabic text. In this part. Where Waraka is saying this is the same angel who was sent to Moses. I'll give you a thousand dollar. If you're a Muslim, I'll give you a thousand dollar if you can show me the word angel from the mouth of Waraka. Guys, here's the challenge. Rob Christian is saying, right? Challenge. Let me put it in the text. I will give you a thousand dollars, right? If you and I think the admins can add more, a thousand more, if you can show me the word of angel, the word angel 
from the mouth of Waraka, the cousin of Khadija. Did Waraka say, this is the angel? No, that's not what Waraka said in the Arabic. This is the Arabic, the original, right? What did Waraka say? Waraka said, this is Namus. What? What did you say, Rob Christian? Namus. What is Namus? Can anyone tell me what Namus means? Admins, if you know this answer, don't say it. Can you tell me what the word Namus means? Mus uh, Muslims or, or the, our audience? What does Namus mean? Anyone? No, not spirit. Let's see, let me scroll back. Yes, Rena, you hit the jackpot. Rena, you hit the jackpot. Namus means law. So what is Waraka saying? Waraka said, says in the Arabic, you see the taqiyah guys? This is the law that was sent to Moses. Ah, how does the law become an angel? You Muslims, you have no shame. You have no shame. You have no honor and you have no dignity when you translate Quran or Hadith and the proof is in front of you. Jibreel became law. How is the Mosaic law that was given to Moses, the Mosaic law, how did that become an angel? You tell me, right? Namus, guys, became an angel. The law became an angel in the false translation. You Muslims have truly no shame. You have no dignity when you fool your audience like this. This is why we always say, the moment you start to learn this language, and the moment you start to do research and you th use your brains, you're going to leave Islam. Right, because the Arabic doesn't mention the word angel from the mouth of Waraka. Namus means law. What is this law? It's the Mosaic law. The 600 guys, correct me if I'm mistaken, the 613 Mosaic, Mosaic laws, right? This is what Waraka is talking about. The Jews, the Bani Israel, that's how Muslims call them, had 613 laws to listen to, 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 to obey. How did the 613 laws become an angel? You liars, you deceivers when you translate the Arabic. You Muslims, when you translate, you have no shame, you have no dignity, you have no honor when you fool your Muslim audience who do not speak or understand Arabic. Im imagine if you're from Indonesia, guys. You're from Malaysia, you're from Indonesia. You don't know Arabic and you are dependent on a translation. See how easy it is to fool you? See how easy it is. Let's say you're a Muslim, you're a Nigerian Muslim, a black Muslim. Right? You're from Nigeria. You're a Muslim. You are dependent on a false translation. They are fooling you. See how they are lying, guys, in a translation. Like I said, I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the word angel, malak, right? Angel in Arabic, guys, is malak, right? Or, yeah, angel, sorry, without the S. So angel in Arabic is malak. Can you show me the word malak in the original Arabic here? From the mouth of waraka? No, you can't. I mean, and the admins are adding thousands more, man. Abdul Halik, how, how, much, how many money are you going to give the Muslims on top my thousand dollars? Rana says another thousand from me. Wow, look how many 
dollars you can achieve, man. At least three thousands, guys. Here, longings of Jerusalem, another. We have four thousand dollars that you can win, guys. Four or five thousand, yeah. Poor Muslims, man. This is why we say, guys. This is why we call Muslims victims of this Arabic cult. Only a small percentage, guys, of the Muslims in this world speak Arabic. Only a small. 75% of all Muslims in this world don't know Arabic. They don't understand Arabic. So they are dependent on false translations like these. They are dependent on the lies of Muslim translators who are lying. So actually, guys, Waraka said, this is the correct translation. Waraka said, this is the same Namus, this is the same mosaic law who was sent to Moses. That's the correct way to translate it. You filthy liars, shame on you. Shame on you to lie in your translations. Shame on you, Muslims. Shame on you. Shame on you. Lying to your Muslim audience who are reading those translations. Shame on you. But we know Muslim translators, Muslim scholars, Islam is a big business for them, guys. Imagine the, the guy who, who translated all this, how many oil dollars he received from... Am I still with you guys? Something happened. My voice is really today, guys. Hope I'm not getting sick or something. But it is what it is, guys. I really need to rest. I think we did a huge damage again today. God is good. Thank you, God, for the truth. Thank you for the gift that I received from you to expose this cult. And I really hope that Muslims will slowly wake up and leave this man-made cult, guys. I really, I really, I'm sad for these Muslims. I really want to ask God, God, please, open their eyes for the truth. If there is a true Muslim listening who is seeking for the truth, tonight before you sleep, when you pray, say these words, God, if you are there, if you are the true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, please show yourself to me. Show me the truth, God. And I'm sure if you are asking from the heart, God will provide. Muslims, please wake up. You cannot respect your own brains and your own salvation and your, your entire existence and still be under this cult, this man-made cult that was created by a desert guy, as according to you, an illiterate desert goat sheeper, camel sheeper, call, call him what you want to call him. Who was only thinking with his penis, sorry to say. You cannot convince anyone who is using his brains that Islam is from the true God. Today we showed you overwhelming amount of evidence that Muhammad is a liar. And we proved to you how he lied about the true prophets like Moses, like Abraham. He's, Muhammad created Islam actually to insult the prophets and to insult the true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who called himself by name Javeh, right? As mentioned in Exodus 3.15. My name is Javeh, Yahweh. My name is Jehovah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Go tell them, Moses, that I'm the one who sent you. This is my name forever. And as we showed you, we mentioned to you, you cannot say that this is the same God because else you're going to call God a liar. And that's an insult to God if you say this is Allah. Are you saying that our holy living God changed his mind? Are you tr really trying to insult this God who said my name forever 
is Yahweh, Jehovah? Are you really insulting my living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Really, Muslims? Well, it's your funeral, Muslims. It's your funeral. You want to insult this God, this holy living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Go ahead. But God was really clear. This is my name, Jehovah, forever and ever. Then Muhammad, 600 years after Jesus says, eh, my God is Allah. Who is Allah, man? We never heard of Allah before. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Share this video around. Guys, don't be lazy. Christians, don't be lazy. Subscribe, smash that like button, destroy it. Share this video with everyone on social media. Please don't be lazy. If you can help just one Muslim out of this quote, this man-made quote, there is going to be a huge celebration in heaven if this person accepts Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Thank you for watching, guys. May Jesus Christ bless you and your loved ones. Thank you for your support and donations. Jesus is Lord. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord, including your knees, Muslims. Thank you for watching and God bless.